Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today I'm going to invite you to cry. We are going to cry a lot. Actually, I have here a dozens of tissues. Long roll. Actually, you know what? I borrow from my neighbor. Because we are going to cry a lot. A Muslims he sent me saying, How come people they cry when they hear the Quran? Hmm. Actually, me, myself, I cried a lot. But usually, I cry from two things. Either when I make salad, when I cut onion, or I cry from laughing. So I'm not sure what do you mean. You see, there's uh, tons of videos made by Muslims for the propaganda business. Look at this guy. This guy, he, he play the Muslims. He's very good in that. He make tons of videos, and he have a lot of subscribers. Uh, you know, he put a picture of a cat crying, and he cried too. Like he make just uh, videos just to fool. You know, I mean, he he is a, a, obviously what he is. But obviously, everybody cry when they hear the Quran. Everybody. I mean, so why we don't? Why we are not crying too? Do you remember when the Muslims they made a video about the cat who don't step in the Quran? I remember this video very well. Then we have a brother which I found it very funny and I cried from laughing at it and then we have a brother his name is David Wood I think many of you know him uh, he went to his friend house and uh, the friend he have many cats uh, many meow uh, because those are I don't know it looked like even cats are Muslims so the Muslim they made a video saying that cats don't step in the Quran I mean look even cats like meow meow even the cat she knew that this is a holy book of Allah and they made a video and they posted it and this video is seen by tens of millions then David Wood he decided to make I don't have cats to do the same as he did I don't have dogs I don't have any animals here uh, so David he did make a video to examine if this is true what the Muslims they post in their videos or it's a fraud let us see what happened you know and for sure this is from the account of our brother David Wood act 17 apologetic you can go and watch the video from there. Let us see the video. Hi, everyone. Well, you might notice the background here. I'm at my friend's house, and he has a cat. Why am I recording another cat video? Well, I recorded a video responding to a disturbingly common Muslim argument claiming that the Quran must be miraculous and from God because a cat will not walk on it. So I tested that over and over again, and it took me on average about half a second to two seconds to get a cat to walk on. Okay, hold on. Let us let us expose the lies here. A brother and sister, this guy David Wood, he is hiring non-believing cat brother. Those cat brother, they are not a believing cat. The previous video, brother, it is about a, a believer cat. This is not a believing cat. What? the Quran each time you're kidding oh my goodness look at those Qurans but there are people who want to defend this absurd claim so they replied in hundreds of comments that the texts I was using weren't Qurans <laughs> Stop that. I mean, look, look at the text book. This is not Quran. This is not Quran. This is not Arabic Quran. This is not Quran. This is fake Quran. This is not a Quran. This is not a Quran. That's not a Quran. Look, look at the comment. Look, none of them is Quran. It's not a Quran. This is not a Quran. Everybody know. Everybody can see. This is not a Quran. This is not a Quran. I mean, look at all the Muslims insisting that the cat will not step in the Quran because this is not Quran. <laughs> the text I was using, um, here we have a variety of Qurans, which they say weren't Qurans, they were dictionaries. So I heard dictionaries, they were phone books, they were random Arabic books, but they were- Hold on, I saw a phone book. We have to be honest there. I, I saw, yeah. is it, is it, hold on. Isn't it the Christian prince who called the Quran yellow pages? Oh, come on, oh, come on, hello. <laughs> Yeah, it's a 
weren't Qurans. Oddly enough, those same people would complain that I set the Qurans on the floor. Odd complaint if they're not really Qurans. But uh, let's go ahead and flip through some of these books to see what they actually are. Notice that it says the Quran. That's odd, considering it's just a dictionary. You can zoom in on this and see it in the original video. Arabic text with corresponding English meanings. And what you have here is you have the English translation over here, and you have the Arabic. This is the full Arabic text of the Quran. You have the entire Quran from Surah 1 all the way to Surah 114 the entire Arabic text of the Quran. Here we also have the Quran. We have the full Arabic text and English translation, some notes and so on. So, Arabic text of the Quran, Arabic text of the Quran, Arabic text of the Quran. This is the full Arabic text of the Quran. Here we have the Noble Quran, odd title for a book that's simply a dictionary. Once again, we have the English text and we have the Arabic text the full Arabic text of the Quran. And yet, for some reason, it's not a Quran, even though it contains the full Arabic text of the Quran. Full Arabic text of the Quran. Lots of English translation, lots of notes. You have introductions, but you also have the full Arabic text of the Quran. And yet, we're told that this isn't the Quran. So basically, you have two different kinds of claims. You have one, people saying that these are just dictionaries or, or some other random texts. I hope you see at least that these are uh, Qurans here. Uh, but then we have another claim, which is that if any translation is added, it's no longer the Quran. So if you have the full Arabic text of the Quran and you add a word of translation, suddenly you have just destroyed the Quran. It's no longer the Quran. Now, why is that odd? Well, the word Quran means recitation, right? It's something to be recited. You write it down in the text because that's the text that is to be recited. So if you have the text in Arabic that's to be recited, then you've got the Quran. But according to our friends out there, it's not the Quran if it has an English translation beside it. So notice, if you were to say that you have the entire Arabic text of the Quran memorized, if you went to classes and memorized the entire text of the Quran, if you know the translation for any one of those verses, you don't have the Quran memorized because you've also got another language in your mind. See how silly this is? But I aim to please, my friends, and so we're going to put this to yet another test. Our friends say that these Qurans are not real Qurans because they're not just in Arabic. If they were only in Arabic, then we could actually have ourselves a little test. Well, we're gonna go ahead and have a little test here. I have a can of cat food. Remember, that was the original claim. The original claim. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you see, guys? Do you see? He is using, uh, let me tell you why the cat is coming. Now we know why the cat coming. Is He is using a very yummy food. I mean, those cats will die to eat it. Hello? Like, come on. Like, you see? Okay. See the kuffar trick? See? We knew the trick. Is that a cat will not walk on a Quran, step on a Quran for food. We're going to test it. Will a cat step on the Quran to get to some food? Let's test it with some Arabic text. So we have here a variety of Arabic Qurans. And we have some delicious cat food. The cat is walking this without food anyway. <laughs> That. Hey, look, where's that cat stepping? Where's the cat stepping? What is that? Man. Very disturbed at how quickly that cat stepped on the Quran. And it's currently stepping on multiple Qurans. What's wrong with this cat? What's this book? You tell me what this book is. This is not Quran. This is not Quran. What is it? Uh, this is because uh, one comment I see over and over again is just because a book's in Arabic doesn't make it the Quran. Well, hold on. this is the story of uh, Alibaba and the uh, 40 thief. I mean, come on, you want to fool us? It has Arabic text, yes, but this is Alibaba's story. This is Alibaba. It's a, the whole book is uh, 40 pages. It's true, but we're not talking about any book that happens to be written in Arabic. We're talking about what this book is. 
What is this book? What is it? If we flip through this book, what is it? Is this Fifty Shades of Grey? No. Is it Huckleberry Finn? No. What is it? Alibaba, I told you. Is it The Adventures of Tom Sawyer? No. What is this book? I told you, it's Alibaba. How about food that's not fancy at all? What about regular dry cat food? Regular dry cat food. Come on. Come on. Uh oh, you she is a step in the Alibaba that story in a quarter. She is walking right on the Quran. Show respect. Wasn't that the claim? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Because people also said that because I had more than one Quran there, that somehow disturbs the Quran. Come here. <laughs> this cat is walking all over that Quran. That was the exact challenge, ladies and gentlemen. The exact challenge was whether a cat would walk. Okay, 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 okay. So you are trying to say to us that this was a fabricated video. By brother, brother and sister, I can witness to you that those are fabricated videos and the cat will never walk in the book of Allah. Hmm. My friend, ladies and gentlemen, I will go. I just remember something. I remember how in Saudi Arabia, Muslims in Mecca, they throw Quran in the sewage. Quran in the sewage. Let me find it. Every year, the government of Saudi Arabia, they clean, and they, even in Pakistan, even in many countries, they clean their sewage and they find tens of thousands of Quran. And who is the one that is throwing it there? The Muslims. Those countries are Muslim countries. Do you see it? They are cleaning the sewage. They are cleaning what exactly? The sewage. This is what Muslims they do to their own book. There's no Muslim, there's no Christians there. However, I want to give a golden opportunity for any Muslim to call us life and to choose for us a verse will make us a cry. Is that fair, guys? What do you think? I mean, maybe this is true. Maybe there's one verse in the Quran make you cry. The rest, they don't make you cry. Huh? Which verse in the Quran will make us a cry? They bring you a guy who have a nice voice and whatever he's saying is going to sound nice. And if you are emotional, already you believe that this is Allah is talking, which is God supposedly, you might cry. But look, we, we are not crying. We are crying from laughing. I mean, I will, I will cry at what exactly? At this? This book? This book where it says that Allah, he promised people heaven if they kill people, if they kill the apostate. Is that how Allah... Is, I will cry, yeah, people will cry from this. Millions of people lost their families because of Muhammad and his teaching. If this is what you mean, I agree. Or maybe you want me to cry because the Quran claimed that the sperm became a baby and in its stage as the following. First, it is a nutfa. Semen. And then the semen will become a congealed blood. That will make me cry from laughing. What kind of God he says such a thing? Huh? Are you crying with me? 
If you don't like the translation, this is Shaka, we can change it for you. Let us see Yusuf Ali. All of them they are Muslims, not my, you know, here we go. And then we have made the sperm into a clot of a congealed blood. I, I, you have to be cry. You have to cry when you see this. I mean, it make me cry to see there is more than a billion human beings believe in the year 2019 that the sperm transform into a clot of a congealed blood. Oh, hold on. What about the Quran saying that women, she have a sperm and the sperm is coming from her nipples. Oh, sorry, not her nipples. It's coming from the location of her necklace in her chest. I'm going to cry. I cry. What is that? You what? Man is created from gushing forth water, issuing from between the lions and the, 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 the backbone of the man and the breastbone of the women. I will cry. I mean, we have to cry. This is God. Or maybe we should uh, uh, cry because uh, Allah, he discovered where hail is coming from. Have you ever heard of God? He think that hail is coming from mountains in heaven. Look like your God. He made his book after he was watching Avatar. Huh? Is that Avatar? From mountains in heaven. Allah, he bring hail down. Do you see it? He sent down out of heaven's mountains, where in his hail. <laughs> That's a discovery. I remember when I was a kid, listening to the Saudi Arabia weather station, you know. By the will of Allah, and insa Allah, tomorrow we might have, if Allah will, on only if Allah will, a wind in the speed of a 20 mile an hour. I mean, the guy, he have to put Allah every two seconds. Otherwise, they will kill him because he is claiming that he knew the future. You cannot do that. You have to say, if Allah will, if it, every two, like, if Allah will, and if, and alhamdulillah, if Allah will tomorrow, if Allah will, and only if Allah will tomorrow, we might have rain. Because they might kill him. Like the guy, he claimed that he knew. Only Allah knew. And that make me cry. Now, who is a very smart, intelligent believer in Islam would like to call us and make us a cry? I don't know. I have a feeling today I want to, like, I, I like to cry. Hmm? I miss it. Who want to do it? Uh, give it a try. As long as you can make those people fake videos, you know, people cry. And even if they are not fake, by the way, I mean... This is emotional stuff, but it's not real. We have uh, we have a missed call from Muhammad Kasim. Let us see if Muhammad you have something. Let's see if Muhammad will make us cry. Look like Muhammad is crying already. He cannot answer that. Okay. What we can say. No answer.
All right. Any Muslim? Anyone? Who is voluntarily willing to make us a cry? I want to cry. I could not believe that Allah He knew about how rain and hail is made. I mean, he break ice from mountains in heaven. This is how ice is made. I'm so glad he did not speak about a refrigerator. Otherwise, the Muslim, they would say, how Allah predict the future. Anyone? What is the chapter? What is the verse? If we read it, will make us a cry. I want to cry. Is that the chapter where it says you can eat in the house of your parents? Or the one it says you can eat in your house? Or maybe the chapter where it says, Muhammad, you can have any woman she want to sleep with you. Any woman she offer herself to the Prophet. Which one? All those videos is made to make you, if you are a naive person, to think about Islam to make you believe that this is really something special they bring you a guy who have a nice voice and he starts singing the Quran in language you don't understand and hoping that his voice will have an impact on you the way he recite but what about you bring me somebody have an ugly voice and let him recite the Quran let us see how many people they will listen with a nice voice anything you say people listen Is that right? Anyone? Let me sing a song for you. Let us see how many they will cry. La 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 la. I don't know what song I will sing. Which one? Da da da. La 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 la. La la la. La 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 la. Eh? I did not say anything. Can Allah do better? Uh, should I send? Yeah, I will send an Islamic song like Backbone, Backbone. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when I come for you? Backbone, Backbone. I mean, have you ever heard of a God? He believed that sperm is coming from the backbone of the man. So what is testicles for? Are they are they like a Christmas light? Why men have testicles? Are they, they are like a flashlight or something? Huh? You made me cry. So you you know they play for you a, a book. You do not understand a word in it. In a language you don't speak, and then they bring you a guy, he have a nice voice, and then they say to you, Oh, you need to look this guy is crying. Are you make me cry? Here we go. A God who think he think that the sperm of the man is coming from the backbone. By the way, brother and sister, I have a friend, and he have a problem with his backbone. 
because he always he don't sit in the cushion and since he do that he don't have kids because the firm of the man and as you know my name is Dakar Naik and I am a doctor what what the backbone and you are a doctor it was nice to meet you I'm really I appreciate your science we cry sure for sure we will cry we are in like I mean we are almost a thousand year a thousand fourteen hundred years after Muhammad and you must believe in this uh, for sure we will cry huh this is a this is Quran proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs meaning the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women and guys this is the main reason I am still single Imagine I get married, we go to the bedroom, the woman, she take off her clothes, you don't see breast, you see testicles. Brother? Breast testicles? This is, this is, this is God? I mean, I'm scared, actually, women, they are scary. They look nice from outside, but they don't hold, hold on. Just wait until they take off their, uh, you know, uh, you, you will see the crazy stuff. They are alien. They are not the human brother. They are alien. What is that? So you want to tell me that this is God and we cry. We cry at what? We cry laughing. This is a comedy. This is going to be from God. So who is a Muslim would like to give us a call? Anyone? I cry when I hear that the prophet, he went to the top of seven heaven and the top of a flying donkey. And what he saw in his way? I mean, Somebody went to the seven heaven and came back. Shouldn't he describe for us the space between? I mean, what, like, how he went there exactly? Did he go see the space? How fast this donkey? If Muhammad, he go in the speed of light, he will not be able to come back after eight hours. What speed of light? You need millions of years. Muhammad was riding a flying donkey. But we have to admit, it was uh, sexy and you know it. Let us see the, the hadith. I was brought al Borak, who is an animal white and long, longer than a donkey, but smaller than a mule. Okay, this is al Borak. This is a spaceship of Muhammad. I want you to explain to me how this donkey, he can go to the space and come back in eight hours. And not only actually come back in his way, he stopped in Jerusalem. Because even if you if even if you go in the speed of light, you cannot make it. You need millions of years. Like nobody knows where the end of the this the, this space is. So if Allah is above all the space, at the end of the universe, how this donkey went? I don't want to mention how the donkey converted to Islam too. Guys, do you know according to, 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 the, to Ibn Kathir, 
Who is the first one who commits suicide in the history of Islam? It was a donkey. His name is Yafur. Yafur is a donkey. He was captured by Muhammad. He killed a Jew. He took his sandals and he took his donkey and he took his silver and his gold. And then the prophet, he asked the donkey, do you like females? And the donkey was weird. I mean, weird donkey. He says, no, I don't like females. Actually, I have a cartoon about it. You can search for it. Anyone? Any Muslim don't agree? Who want to say something? And look, in his way, he went to Jerusalem. I mean, not only he went to the seven galaxies, and what in heaven he saw who he saw Isa, he saw Moses, uh, he saw Abraham. I mean, he saw Adam, and Adam was crying. He looked at the right, he laughed. He looked at the left, he cried. I mean, what a comedy show! Hey, Adam, can you stop this? You are giving me, you are, you are making me dizzy, man. He looked at the right, <laughs> and then he looked at the left, and he started crying. <laughs> and why? He, uh, uh, a prophet, he asked him why. He asked Jibril why he, uh, Adam is doing that. He said he looked at the. At the right, he find those who will go to heaven. He look at the left, he find those, he see those who they are going to go to hell. Like, what a comedy. I wonder how, I wonder why. You told me about the blue, blue sky and all what I can see. Just an idiot around me. I turn my head up and down. I turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around. And I don't see Al Burak even near me. There's no witness, nobody saw it. But he went and came back. And don't ask me. And all what I can see, Muslim claim that this is what it to be. No witnesses. I mean, do you have you ever heard of a, of, of a guy? Okay, guys, let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. yesterday after I said to you goodbye and good night and good evening and hello and good morning and how, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And then I went to my bedroom and then a donkey came to my room. And the donkey he speak Arabic. All animals speak Arabic. Are you kidding me? And he said to me, Allah, he want to see you. I jump in the top of the donkey and he kicked me. He said, you cannot do that. I said, so what I would do? He said, I am a respectable donkey. So I said, okay, how am I going to go with you? He said, walk with me. And we walk together to heaven. True story. Prove me wrong. Do Muhammad have one witness that he went anywhere? I mean, what? What kind of miracle? Nobody saw, nobody witnessed. And even Aisha, she said his body was here. Even Aisha, she said the prophet body, his physical body was here. So, so how he went there? Hmm? Anyone? Hello. And here the story, by the way, it, it turned into more comedy. Like when Muhammad, he went to the gate with the, with the donkey and Jibreel. Jibreel, when he arrived at the gate of the heaven, the angel guards of the door of the heaven, they said, who is there? Like, what? The angels, they did not recognize Jibreel. Why? They don't have a software for a face identification. This is Jibreel, the most important angel for Allah. The guy who is going backward, forward, backward, forward. I mean, come on, how many times a day they see him? And now they are asking him, who, who, who are you? He said, Jibreel. Look, look. Read carefully with me. Hmm. Jibreel then asked the gate of the heaven to be opened. And he was asked, who he was like what 
Like what? Why? Who are you? Like what? This is the supposedly this is the head of the angels. Like who are you? I'm Zabril. He replied, Zabril. That's it. The problem solved. He said, Jibreel, I will go now to Allah. I say, open the door. He said to me, who are you? I say, Jibreel. I mean, the story is very convincing. Aren't you crying? And then he replied, saying, Jibreel, he was asked again, and who is with you? Look at this investigation. It's like the headquarter of the CIA. Those angels are a bunch of ignorant. They do not know who is Muhammad. They never heard of Muhammad. Are you kidding me? The name of Muhammad written in the chair of Allah. Everybody knows Muhammad. But the angels of Allah, they do not know. Who is he? Look how insulting. There's a guy, an Arab guy. Uh, he have his cousin coming to visit him. The cousin asked the visitor, he asked his cousin, why uh, his name is Johnny. He said, Johnny, why everybody say hi to you? Said, uh, cousin, I'm here very famous. It's really, said, yeah, I'm very, very famous. Everybody know me. Mean, that's really good. So one day, uh, they are in, in, in Italy, you know, so they went to the Vatican. And the Pope, he was making a speech. Johnny, he said to his cousin, I'm going to say and say hello to the Pope. Okay, just wait for me here. The cousin, he was suspecting that, that his cousin really is so famous. So he asked the guy, when his cousin stopped in the stage to say hello to the Pope, he asked his, uh, the guy who was standing next to him, he said to him, hey, by the way, uh, do you know uh, who is that guy there in the stage? The other guy, he said to him, uh, the guy next to Johnny, you mean? I do not know. The Italian guy recognized Johnny, but he could not recognize the Pope. And this is exactly what the Muslims are saying to us. Johnny was more famous than the Pope. Like, you, you mean uh, the one, the guy in white next to Johnny? I don't know him. But Johnny is known, but the Pope is not. So the angels of Allah, they are not recognizing Jibreel and they are not recognizing Muhammad. How they recognize them? What's your name? I'm Jibreel. And who is he, Muhammad? Nice to meet you. And that is a story will make me convinced and I'm going to cry. I cry. Look, we have 777 watching the video now. We don't have too many today. I don't know why. James Bond. <clears throat> I mean, if we want to read the story, we will die laughing. He went to the second heaven and he asked him the same question in second heaven. Who are you? He said again, Jibreel. And look, they are asking him, he was, he was uh, uh, being sent for. Look, look. Allah did not leave the name of Muhammad in the door. <laughs> what kind of security Allah, Allah he has? <laughs> he wasn't asked for? Shouldn't you check with Allah? Like, what do you mean he had been asked for? And Jabri, he says, yes, indeed. He sent for. And then the door of heaven opened. And then, brother, I saw Adam. Okay. Adam in heaven, I thought I thought Muhammad, he said before in different place, he will be the first to be resurrected between all mankind. So what do you mean Adam in heaven? And he welcomed me and prayed for my good. Then we escandee to the second heaven. So that's it. The first heaven have only Adam. <laughs> I mean, this Adam is really a big shot. He is taking the whole floor by himself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm unbelievable. I'm crying now. Adam alone in the holy floor. I mean, what is Eve? Oh, uh, Eve, she cannot be there because she's a female. <laughs> Adam is busy with his versions. <laughs> yeah, Adam, how are you doing? I'm busy. 
what are you doing? I told you I'm busy. You're busy, you're doing what? First of all, I did not say to you, I'm busy. I said, I'm busy. I'm busy. busy, busy. What does that mean? Don't, okay, I'm doing like the bees, bees. Uh, I, I did not uh, get it, Adam. What do you mean? I have a lot of flowers around me. I'm getting their nectar. Busy, busy. Did you get it? Okay, sorry. Adam is busy with the virgin. Hmm? And then he went to the second heaven and they asked him the same question. Look. Then we went to the second heaven. Jibreel asked for the door to be opened. The same story. And it was asked who he was. He answered, I'm Jibreel. And he asked again, who is with you? Like, what's wrong with this security? Are we going to do that? Each time we open a door in the heaven, he has seven doors. And then you bring me a cat. She don't walk in the Quran. Are you Thor? <coughs> new story I found. What do you mean new story? There's no new story for a Christian prince. All stories are old. Because I, me, and Allah, we are together in the same uh, classroom. Actually, it was my idea to create the version. You know? Because one day we were making, uh, you know, hummus. And I said, I need to use virgin oil. Allah, he heard the word virgin. And he, bingo, got the idea. He said, okay, I'm going to create women who are virgin. Not only oil is virgin. I said, Allah, but this is very dangerous. He said, oh, why it's dangerous? He says, because, uh, well, <clears throat> if you... <laughs> And they lose their virginity, then uh, <coughs> will happen. He said, "Don't worry, be happy. I will make them virgin again." To believe in this, you have to have a virgin brain, never been used, ever. Hmm. Do we have any uh, Muslim don't agree? Where are you going to sleep? We have a guy is going to sleep, guys. A Christian Prince uh, program is like Islam. You can get any, you cannot get out. Where are you going? Where are you going? The guy is. Okay, what do you mean, good night? A hey, brother, hold him. He is murtad. He is an apostate. He is leaving us. You cannot go. How we can grow in number? Good mo good night. What was would you, you you think that's it? You can get in so easy and you leave as you wish. Hello, crazy people. You get in, you cannot kill, you cannot leave. That's it. You stay here until uh, you know judgment day. Do we have anyone want to show us something will make us proud about in the Quran? <coughs> Muhammad Iqbal Muhammad Iqbal the kid any Abdul anyone My talk is like song Hotel California. What Hotel California? My friend, first in California, there is no hotel left. Nobody go in hotel. These days, everybody is homeless. It's a business. You go, you open a tent in the side of the road. They give you free food, free drink, free electricity, and you are the good guy. Now you want to go to work. 
and the government support you so change the song yeah it's not a hotel California it's called it became tent California why you cannot call Skype I don't know ask Allah well are you going to blame the Jews if you cannot call Skype obviously Allah is not supporting you isn't it the Quran says everything happened especially the bad one is by the will of Allah brother is it true or I'm making things up hello this is the Quran saying all bad things happen to you by my by my will so do you think you cannot call me because of Allah will is it Allah will involve brother So if everything happened in this earth is bad, happened by the will of Allah, why you blame the devil for bad things? The Quran is full of guidance. Uh, hold on. I don't know if this is the true Muslim Abbas or this is something different. I'm not going to respond until I, I'm sure that this is the same guy. I think he's just a joker. If you are a joker, I'm going to ban you, Muslim pupper. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? All bad things happen by the will of Allah. Okay, let me ask you. When the Muslim, they say the Bible of Allah is corrupted. So does that mean that the Bible of Allah corrupted by the will of Allah? somebody uh, saying to me you are a donkey my friend i don't know why you are saying that because if i am that will be make me the cousin of your prophet wife or her brother your prophet he married zainab ibn to jash zainab the daughter of the donkey so i'm not sure what do you mean i'm not her cousin any muslim was the Bible of Allah corrupted by the will of Allah? The Quran says yes. Any bad things happen in this earth by the will of Allah. So who is a Muslim and explain to us why Allah, he corrupted his book? Don't you think he is like he's mad, he's crazy? I mean, you are. this is your book. Allah is working against Allah. Somebody saying Quran guide you to hell. Quran guide you nowhere, my friend. The only, th the first thing the Quran will make you, you, you will lose your GPS for anything. What guide you to hell? Even hell, you will be homeless. You will be homeless about science. You will be homeless about uh, 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 when Allah He teach Muslims that a man He can beat his wife. I mean, is that will fix your family or you will make you <laughs> an idiot, professional idiot? Beat your wife. I mean, what kind of God he advise a man to beat his wife? And what for to make her obedience? Okay, you beat your wife. She go and God knows what she will put for you in the food later. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Did you beat her? Hmm? Ah, now I know what happened to the prophet. This is why the Shia, they accuse Aisha that she killed Muhammad. Is that true, brother? Is that true? Here we go. Muhammad, he think he is dying because of the poison he ate in Khaybar. Many Muslims, they said to me, but this is impossible because this is a four years ago. Obviously, his wife then, Aisha. Aisha, she was putting maybe rat uh, food for him, rat poison, something.
Hmm? Anyone? And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what, what the Muslims, Shia, I believe. There's tons of videos, just search in English. And, you know, there's a big sheikh. His name is Yasser Habib. And many others, they claim that the one who called, killed Muhammad uh, is Hafsa and uh, Aisha. Both of them conspiracy against him. Anyone? So you made me come here, go live on air, and yet nobody want to call us to show us one verse in the Quran will make us cry. Very embarrassing. I'm really disappointed. Let me tell you a story which is more useful, guys. I want to give you some advices. Okay? You know, I like really to advise people and help them in their lifestyle. Uh, brothers and sisters, yesterday an angel came to me and he said to me, you can eat in your home. And now I'm going to explain to you the benefit of eating in your home. A prophet, God told you that we can eat in our home. Yes, brother. A prophet, I was eating in my home all my life. A brother, still it is Allah who told us to do it, so we do it. Prophet, we are doing that since uh, the beginning of mankind. I mean, where, where a human being eating, eating his home. Listen, this is not the topic. The topic is Allah, he ordered us, it is okay to eat in your home. But the brother, already we are eating in our home. Even the kuffar, they eat in their home. The atheists, they eat in their home. Everybody eat in his home. Hey, brother, this is not the topic. The topic is that Allah said you it's okay for you to eat in your home. What's the problem? Do you have a problem? If you have a problem, we are going to call our brothers, the Mujahideen. Do you have a problem? Uh, no, I don't have a. I understand. I have no problem. I did not say anything. Actually, I agree with you. Allah is all wise, all knowledgeable. Right? Any Muslim? And the brother, Allah told me, if you are blind, you can eat in your home. A brother, are you sure? First of all, don't call me brother. I'm a prophet. And you know it. If you are blind, you can eat in your home. So where are the blind supposed to eat? Any Muslim can tell me? I mean, the blind supposedly he eat where? Now Allah given him permission to eat in his home. Why in the time of Muhammad, there was like a Sheraton and married, like whatever five stars hotels and the restaurants I mean, where the people eat it's not it's no fault in a blind nor in the one who is born lame so if you cannot walk straight you can eat in your home wow thank you allah thank you i was waiting for this moment all my life all my life i was waiting outside my home now i can eat and look, look at the wisdom How many want to cry? And then he says, a nur, uh, what? Uh, nur, the one who is afflicted with illness. Oh, are you serious? If somebody, brother, is sick, he can eat in his home too? Yes, brother. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. Allah is all wise. Nur in yourselves. So if we, and we, even if we are not ill too, we can eat in our home? Yes, brother. Oh, I was afraid, brother, that I will not be included. This is this is God. He went to his office and he started writing this. Don't you think this is so deep? By the way, YouTube is very weird. I mean, I, I'm not familiar with YouTube. Like you see, I came from the Arabia, and by the way, we are the one who discovered uh, the internet. I'm telling you, 
uh, even like a very famous uh, Shakespeare. His, he's an Arab. His name is Shakespeare. But anyway, I'm not going to tell you about how great we are as Arab. I'm looking now at uh, YouTube. I see there's 554 giving me finger. What is that? And then there's nine, the finger up, and there's nine giving me a finger down. Brother and sisters, I don't deserve that finger. The only one deserve that finger is Allah. Look at this verse. I mean, look at it. Who can make a verse like this? Give a finger up to Allah, please. Because the truth is, all the wisdom is coming from his uh, finger. Hmm? Anyway. I'm not going to stay long, really, but I, when the Muslim, they send me this. Today, I, I like for the first time, I went to uh, Facebook after a long time. It just to post that uh, many people do not know I have a new book in, Ger in the German, Sex and Allah, already translated to German and to Dutch. So I went there and I posted and saw some posts made by Muslims. And I, I, you know, I cannot believe it how funny their post. هل يمكنني الاتصال بك عزيزي المستمع اتصل بجبريل على الرقم الآتي صفر 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 صفرين والله أعلم I cannot translate for you sorry this is a, <coughs> was a verse uh, uh, inspired to me by Allah <laughs> unbelievable uh, what do you mean stand what stand up comedy? I mean, this is the American. I mean, English is really funny. Stand up comedian. I mean, can you be comedian and you are sitting? Why I need to stand up? G give me, give me a reason, my friend. Your reasoning is the same as reasoning of Allah. Stand up comedian. Okay, what can we do it? And we are sitting. Like hello, and honest to God, I'm sitting right now. So you are saying to me, in order to be a comedian, I have to stand up. Okay, I quit. I quit. That's it. I don't want to do it. You do it. You stand up, and I uh, I speak. <laughs> so, do we have anyone want to say something to us? Something smart. Something intelligent. Something amazing. Huh? <clears throat> anyone? What is this? Is this is God talking? And then He says to you. And you can eat in your houses, and you can eat the house of your fathers and your mothers. And let me call my mom to tell her I can eat in her mother in her house. And your brothers, and what is that? What is that? You can eat in your house. I wonder what Allah was eating at that day. I think Allah, he should have changed the channel. He is watching too much CNN. Anyone? Do you know the history of Islam calendar? <laughs> Islam calendar. <laughs> My friend, what kind of calendar that the month can come in January and the same month can come in July? What calendar? Have you ever heard of a calendar? The same month, it changed every month, every year. Sometimes it comes in the winter, sometimes it comes in spring. This is not a calendar. This is a messed up calendar. There is no calendar. You know, just to give you an example about the calendar of Allah. The Arab, they wanted to examine the knowledge of Muhammad. So they said to him, what is the Ahilla? Ahilla is the crescent moon. They wanted to know why the moon looked like this. Is that the same moon, different moon? Because people, they believe this is a different moon. So they are asking you, and look here at the stupid translation, concerning about the new moon. You see the word new moon? 
Guys, do you see the word new moon? New moon. This is the crescent moon. Okay. Now Muhammad, he didn't know. Allah will answer. The wise Allah will answer. Look, we said to him, the guy, he went home. He'd been squeezed by Jibreel. Allah sent him the message. The message is like a serious message, man. And he said to him, they are asking you concerning the crescent moon. Say, it's a sign mark for a period of time <laughs> to do Hajj. <laughs> they are not asking you what we are using it for. We are asking you what it is. He ran away from the answer. They are asking you what is the Ahilla? Not what we use it for. They are using it already for that. People, do you understand what I'm saying? Imagine I say to you, okay, what is the reason for the moon to look like this? Is that a new moon, different moon? Is that a different planet? Or so, and then you say to me, the moon is used for timing. But this is not the question. The question why why it is like that? Explain how this is happening. How the moon sometimes is full, sometimes it is a crescent moon. That is the question. Anyone? Okay, guys, I'm not going to stay long. Uh, don't forget, please, to download my videos before we take them down. We don't leave them for long. I'm working in my book. It's called uh, Allah's Justice. Because Allah is full of justice. I mean, He's full. If you open the barrel from the top or from the bottom, it's the same. He's full of justice. I mean, you will see. So I want to finish this book as soon as I can. And uh, this is why I'm not really staying long. Actually, I was away for a few days just working in the book. And you know, uh, I am the same as Allah. I need like to be in the mood of writing. You know? So uh, I hope we will be able to finish it soon. And I will send Jibreel. And Jibreel will publish it. Anyone knows Jibreel? I find it really good that Jibreel, he speak Arabic. I mean, this is the same Jibreel. He came to Mary and he speak Hebrew. But the difference is, when Jibreel, he came to Mary, he said to her, Shalom. When Jibreel came to Muhammad, he squeezed him. Any Muslim knows why? Is it, Salamu Alaikum is the greeting of Allah? How come Jibreel did not agree with Muhammad with peace? Why he's coming in war? I forgot. Ah, he did not remember it. Ah, there is a Muslim, he says, Astaghfirullah. That's a good move. That's a good move. Astaghfirullah. Hmm. But don't you know that the Quran says you ask for forgiveness or you don't ask, it doesn't matter? Because it's your destiny. Hmm? Astaghfirullah. Okay. Maybe we have a Muslim. Even though I, I have to go soon, but let us give him a chance for somebody. Okay, he's a Muslim. Answer, answer, my friend. Hello? 
Yes, hello. Yes, I want to give you a verse. All right. Uh, so you said you are a Muslim first, right? Yes. And what kind of Muslim you are? Uh, I'm a Sunni Muslim. All right. Give me a verse, my friend. Um, uh, Surah 8, verse 33. Surah 8, verse? 33. 33. Okay. Read it for us. Go ahead. I'll read it in English. Okay. okay. Call upon me, I will respond to you. What? what? Call upon me, I will respond to you. But this is not the chapter this 8, verse number 33. 833, yes. It doesn't oh, say sorry, sorry. No, no, I'm, I made the mistake. I made the mistake. Um, hmm. It's 4060. Chapter 40? Verse 60. Okay, chapter 40, verse 60. All right, go ahead, read it for us. Call up on me, I will respond to you. Okay, and did that happen? Yes. To who? To everyone who calls upon him. All right, well, your prophet, he been challenged to have a miracle every day in his lifetime. And Muhammad in the Quran keeps saying that Allah refrain from sending miracles. So how he call him and I will answer you. The Quran is a miracle. Well, hold on. The Quran says that Allah refrain from giving miracles. Is that true? Giving miracles to other prophets. He refrained to give miracles to Muhammad. Muhammad had many miracles. Well, the Quran then is a contradiction because here we go. This is Quran speaking about Muhammad, not about others. Here we go. Read for me chapter 17, verse number 59. Uh, on your YouTube channel, yes? You can read it in your book from your side. doesn't matter. Chapter 17, verse number 59. Let me open it up. And we can open One for second. you any translation you wish. Which translation you like? Which translation is your favorite translation? Uh, Pictal. Here we go, Pictal. All right. So what do you think? Allah, he says he refrained from sending miracles. Yeah. So how Allah, he says in that verse, ask me and I will answer you. And the people, the Arab, keep asking Muhammad, and Muhammad answered them, I have no miracles. Yes, but you know, inside inside the Quran, there are many miracles. Like what? Give me one. Uh, for example, um, that, that honey is a healer. It's what? Honey can honey can heal. Uh, I think it's Surah 86. Honey can heal? Verse uh, okay, hold on. Yes. Uh, uh, okay, hold Surah on. Surah 16, verse 69. Yeah, but this is the, the honey can heal. This is exist in the Bible. And it's not a miracle of God. I mean, this is, a, uh, you know, something people they knew before a long, long time. People use honey for it. But let me show you, as long you are saying. Uh, uh, Surah 16, verse 68. No, no problem. Okay. Uh, in the Quran, your God, he made a mistake. Speaking about that verse. Because that verse, it says, that the bees they eat fruits and they do poo poo and their poo poo is honey. That's not correct. I read it. This is the chapter you gave me, verse number six. Yes, I know. Okay, read it. What they eat? What they are? What their food? According to the Quran. You look, it says wherein is healing for mankind. My friend, mankind. my friend, read the verse. They eat from the yes. fruit and they do poop honey. It's in the front of yes, you. they eat fruit. Yes, uh, okay, but, but the bees but eat no, fruit. the bees don't eat the fruit. This is not true. They do. No, shall I eat, show you? No, the bees they eat honey. The food is their no, food is you honey. Me to show you. I can show you. My friend, their the bees, their food is honey. So your God Allah, He is an ignorant. He thinks that bees they eat a fruit and they poop honey. I will show you. Okay, my friend, does it say in the front of you they eat a fruit? Okay, what is so? What yes, is the honey? Yes. So the bees, when they make yes, honey, they okay. Well, let me ask you. So what is the honey? Why the bees they have honey? What is that? It, they suck the nectar out of the fruit. All right, but the nectar they don't eat it as nectar. They eat the honey, correct? 
No, they produce honey. They don't eat honey. So, so, they so, the so why the they fruit. produce honey? Why they produce honey? Because they transform the nectar that they suck why, from why? the fruit. Why they want to? Why, why they want to? Okay, you said that the nectar is their 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 uh, their food, correct? Yes. Okay. So why they don't eat just the nectar as it is? Why they make it honey? Because that's what comes out from the bodies. See, this is exactly what I'm saying. Your God Allah saying that they eat honey and they do poop honey. <laughs> they eat they eat they eat the fruit and they eat honey. They they poop honey. And you agree with Allah. And this is a mistake. Yeah, but that's a miracle because what's a miracle? They, they are eating, the they are eating, they are eating the fruit, but this is false. The bees Look, don't read. eat the fruits. They do they eat they eat um the fruit, they suck the nectar and then um they produce honey. Thank you. The nectar they suck it, but they don't eat it, they suck it. They collect the nectar, they go to their hives, and then they transform the, the nectar into honey. So you're a prophet and your God think that those bees they eat a fruit and they do poop honey. And then we collect their poop. Yes, but that, that look, okay. Can, no, 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 listen. They suck the nectar. Mm. They produce honey, mm. okay, mm. and that honey is a healing for mankind. Okay, so, but so that's a miracle. How can you say heal, um, honey is uh, healing for mankind? Well, this is you can go right now, type in Google the uh, the word honey in the Bible. You will see the Bible saying the same, and this is a book long written before Muhammad. So show me, show, show me that. Show okay, me that. if if I show you what you will do, then I will say this is not a miracle because it was known before. So anything is known before you were rejecting the Quran? Yes, because it's it's not it's not a miracle because if it was known before. Mm. It's like me saying the 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 earth is not flat. Everyone knows that. That's not a miracle. All right. Do you understand me? All right. I understand you, yeah. Go ahead. I've sent I've sent you a link on Skype. Yeah. Uh, well I don't open links in Skype. You can you can read from Oh okay. No, it, it it's an article saying that uh, uh, bees suck the nectar out of the We fruit. know we know that bees they suck the nectar. We know that, my friend. It's not a secret. But, but, from they, the fruit. but they don't eat the nectar. They transform the nectar. Yes, they transform. Yeah, that's okay, that's what I'm saying. Hmm. This is a verse from the Bible in the front of your eyes. It says that from the honey there is a sweet and to soul health to the bones, even to the bones. This is one verse. There's many verses. So what your prophet he brought that it's it's, a, it's healing. This is something people of old they knew a long time before Muhammad. What a big deal. What, what what's honeycomb? Uh, honey, the honey, the honey. Let me look it up. One second. Okay. Well then, well then, I guess that's not a miracle if it was known before. Okay, give me the from miracle then. Uh, the the splitting of the moon. Okay, splitting of the moon. The moon is not a split. The moon is there. No, but it was split. No, if the moon is split for a second, the moon will be divided into two parts. Correct. Yes. Okay. It's called an eclipse. And if you, okay, thank you. So the eclipse is the moon split. Sorry. Is the moon eclipse? Is the moon splitting? No. Okay. So why you are is the way we see it. So why you are saying it's a miracle? Because it was actually split, as in in two. It wasn't one. Okay. And wh what is the point of this miracle, which nobody see? Um, to make the unbelievers believe the, the ones at that time. And did they believe? The pagans. Did they believe? Some of them, yes. No. Here we go, and that will be the contradiction for this verse. That your your God, He says to Muhammad, that I refrain from sending miracles because people they will not believe. So, and this verse came long after. So, how Muhammad, He says that Allah He split the moon, but then we find a verses came in after that verse saying that Allah refrained from sending miracle. Mm. This verse came after the moon, chapter 17, verse number 59. 
It came after the moon splitting. Okay, so that means there's a contradiction. Nothing, I don't think nothing stop us from sending ayat or miracles to the people, except that people of old they deny it. But this is not true. Christians they believe in the miracles of Jesus and the miracles of Moses and the miracle of the prophet. So this is a false excuse. Uh, it's not. It's not talking about the Christians. It's talking about the pagans of the Arabia. It doesn't matter. But there, there's people there. People. Okay. So if, but if, if people of old they reject them, and don't you Muslims you say Muhammad he married from a Khadija and she was a Christian? Yes. Okay. So this is mean according to you Muslims, Quraysh is have a there is a Christian people. So no, because what, because what, they are not in. What no? No, no, because today they are not there. They are not Christians in Arabia. We are talking about the time of Muhammad, not now. This is happening in the time of Muhammad, my friend, not now. Yes, well. So um, can can we can, you, can we go to um yeah can we go to Surah eighty six verses five to seven? Okay, eighty six. Eight yeah five to seven. Are you sure you are a Muslim or you are making fun of Islam? No, I'm be because I saw you mentioned this before, and oh, okay. I want to um, explain it to you. Oh, okay, go ahead, explain it to us. Basically, uh, you know, he says uh, coming from the uh, uh, lions of the man. Hmm. It's coming from the lions, and that hmm. is true if really? you look scientifically. How? So the, the sperm is coming from the backbone of the man. No, it, because in what was the word in Arabic? Sol for, for for the backbone. Sol. Yeah, but that means lions, right? No, it means backbone, specifically. No, because I've looked at other translations and they say instead of backbone, they say okay, lions. Okay, okay, the okay, 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 of, okay um, let me ask you what okay, what the lions mean? What the word what that word mean? Um genitals from from uh, the testicles. R uh, this word mean uh, that? Really? Yeah, go to the interpretation of Ibn Kathir. Okay, we'll go to Ibn Kathir. Here we go. It's in front of us. And Read. Or a jolly line, they say lions. Okay, they don't no, it say says, it says it says in the front of us backbone. And the translator he put between two brackets, which means Ibn did not say that. He said all yeah, lions. lions. Okay. But he said the backbone, right? Yeah, but look, all lions. Okay, what uh, but 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 even the lions, by the way, they are bones. No, they're not. Uh, here we go. I will take you to the dictionary. Here we go, dictionary. I'll, I'll, I'll take it to English dictionary. Here we go. I have it in dictionary in front of me. It says that they are the the the, the ribs and the hip bones in front of you. Look, it says the region of the sexual organs, especially when regarded as the source of erotic or proactive. Yeah, power. but here, but here it say this is this is the translator saying the word lions, lions. But the the Arabic it says backbone. And it's still he meant no, it, he meant the in Arabic, Arabic. In Arabic, it means both backbone and no, lions. No, my it can friend. Mean either, no, my either friend. Either or. Okay. No, no. This is not true. In Arabic, it means only bones and mean exactly the backbone. I've asked. I've asked an okay, Arabic speaker. Okay. Let me ask. Let me ask. It, do you speak Arabic? Uh, Shoya. Okay. Do you know somebody who speak Arabic? Yes, but um, I have a friend, but it's not next to me okay. right now. This is the dictionary. I will put it for you in the front of you on the screen. Read for me what the dictionary says. This is your Arabic Islamic dictionary. This is what the word soul mean. So Yes, uh, but you can also mean lions, can't it? No, it doesn't. How do you say lions in Arabic? Uh, there's many words. I mean, like uh, Arabic but is look, very. None of them is about it because it's not a, it's not the bone. This is the okay, backbone. So my friend, my friend, that's the word solb. The word solb is a specifically the backbone. You can go and open any interpretation you want. You said to me Ibn Kathir, right? Here we go. This yeah. is Ibn Kathir. Hmm. This is Ibn Kathir. Meaning the backbone or the ribs of the woman. Do you see it? Yes, but it, you know, okay. if you go to a jelly line, let's go to another thing. They no, also say let us go to a jelly line. Hold on. I will go to a jelly line. Remember, remember, this is your choice, right? Yes. I'm just trying to clarify.
to fight this. Yeah, you can. I'm not trying to be friend, friend, contradict you. You are reading. You are reading your own Islamic translation, and even your Islamic translation is proving Islam to be false. Let us go to Ajjalalain. <clears throat> okay. Do you agree with the Jalalain? I can't see. It's how can I Do you agree with the Jalalain? And this is the Muslim translation again. A Jalalain, it says in Arabic clearly, this is the backbone. See, from the between the lines of the man and the breast. Yeah, the lions the here movement. they made the backbone. I can show mm -hmm. it to you in Arabic and you can read it. But let me ask but you, do you has, okay, you know what? I will go with you. Let's just wait. Do you agree with the Jalalain here saying that this is a sperm coming from the man and the women? The, yeah. the, the lions of the man and the ribs of the women? Yeah. Okay, so do you agree that Allah saying that there's women have a sperm and the sperm is coming from, the, from their ribs? With, let, let's clarify the man thing first and then we'll go to the... the no, no, both, because the, we, we don't want to uh, argue for false, you know? Because you are simply make, making, a, a, making a statement, you can prove it. I can prove it easy. I can switch right away to Arabic. It says it clearly as so that it is the backbone. Very easy yeah, for me. I can do it, but you don't speak Arabic. In the tafsir, in the tafsir it translates as lines. In the tafsir, in the tafsir, in the front of us, I can go right now and I go to the tafsir and I will choose any tafsir you want and you will see all of them, they agree with me. So, no, they agreed with me. Ibn, 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 Ibn Kathir and Ajalalain Here we go, with me. Ibn they Kathir said, in the front of you. Don't stop stop playing games. This is Ibn Kathir. You see the page in the front of you? Stop playing games. Do you see Ibn Kathir in front of you? This is the page. It says the backbone and the ribs. Do you see it? This is Ibn Kathir. The backbone, meaning the backbone or the lions of the man. Okay, so you are saying it is not the backbone. So if not the back, if not the backbone, so what is why he is using the word lions unless he is he mean bones? This is what the word mean in here. So this is the it's backbone. The this is Ibn Kathir saying the word backbone. Explain to me why Ibn Kathir is saying the word backbone. Uh, in, bra in brackets, it says lions. Exactly. This is mean. It's not Ibn Kathir saying that. This is the translator. So, so it's definitely backbone. It must be backbone. This is a translator trying to fix it. He says uh, the etc. But, but Ibn, Kathir, Ibn Kathir, same as a Jalalain, same as a Jalalain. You are reading translation. If you go, Jalalain says uh, lions. It doesn't say backbone. No, it says backbone. You want to bet? Yes. Okay, let us go. Let's go. Let us go to a Jalalain. Al Jalalain. The seer of Jalalain. Here we go. Hmm. And I can give you a name. Yeah, you mean between the sulb, the rajul, what tara Ibu Lil Mur Awahiya is almost sadr. Did you understand anything? Yes. Hmm. What what it says? Go ahead. Uh is, there's a gashic fluid coming from um the lines of a man and it doesn't uh, say line. Why it says the word line? Do you see that? Show me which one. Well, which it, says, word? it says, which word? The backbone. <laughs> the backbone. <laughs> so it's the backbone and the, the, the women breast bones. But don't you think this is stupid? Both of them are wrong because neither the man, neither the women, they have such a thing. Secondly, the women don't have a sperm. Number three, how in the world a woman who don't have a sperm at all. Yet he claimed that her sperm is coming from the location of the necklace. Well, the first part is true, but the second part I don't agree with it. But I okay, so you are saying to me that Allah he did lie in the second part. Second part, according no, to you. No, there's a doctor. It's called Doctor Moore who agrees. With I know Doctor Moore. Doctor Moore he did not speak about this, and the Muslim follow him. They speak about the nutfa. This is a different story. Which, which is yes, but he agrees with this statement. No, he did not agree with this because then he never mentioned this. Don't don't lie. Dr. Moore, no, Dr. Moore, they give him the, the, the verse about Nutfa and they lie to him and they say to him the word uh, Alaqa uh, mean a leech. But the fact the word Alaqa does not mean that in the Quran. Yes, Alaqa, is a congealed, in Alaqa is a congealed dead blood. Now we can show all Islamic interpretation and they will get all those Muslim liars busted. They lie to this guy, lying to him, says this is what it means. The guy doesn't speak Arabic. But it doesn't say that. Yeah. 
But do you agree? No, don't, don't change. Don't change. We will go there one by one. Okay. So now you agree that the second part, everybody heard you saying that at least the second part of the verse is wrong. Correct? Scientifically, yes. It okay. hasn't been so what yet. kind of God? He, he uh, uh, half of the verse, according to you, is correct. And half of the other verse is wrong. Because now the creation of the baby is wrong. Because as, uh, as long half is right and half is wrong, it doesn't matter which half. We have a wrong creation of the baby. Yeah, I think some the translators translated it wrong or something. My friend, who care about translators? I speak Arabic. I read in Arabic. Okay, let me. Okay, what if we go and see what your prophet said? What do you think? Do your prophet understand how the baby is made? Yes. Okay. Let us see what if your prophet alive. said. Whatever your prophet said, obviously your prophet he understand the Quran better than you and me, right? Yeah. Okay. Read with me. This thick and white, and almost water is thin and yeah, that's true. That's true. That's or the true. resembling part, I don't know about the resembling part, but I mm. and um, the water being thick and white is true. And okay, what is the is water? Thin. When Muhammad he says the word water. For for both water of the women and water of the man, what is that water? Uh, the lubricant part, you know, the, the the thing that comes at the beginning. All right. So you this is what make the baby. The this is what make the baby. No, that's not true. But this is what the Quran. This is what the Hadith is saying. Which of them comes first? The child will resemble the parent. Um, the thing about the water is true, but the, the resembling part, um, I don't think so. So you are saying to me that your prophet and your God Allah, half of their sentence is true and the other half is stupid. Is that what you are trying to say? There has to be an interpretation behind it. Um, My friend, given the interpretation, here we go. He's describing for you. He claimed that man, he have a sperm and it's white. He called them both water. And it's gushing forth. This is the same interpretation for chapter 86, verse number six and seven. So the man water is thick and white. The women water is thin and yellow and whoever of them comes first the baby will resemble the parent so about who come first who is going to control but the water of the women which he's talking about have nothing to do with the baby in any way hmm. yeah and also it's not yellow huh uh, also it's not yellow unless um, she has unless she uh, have infection. Like, yeah, if she has infection. unless she have sick. Yeah. yeah, but Muhammad looked like he made oh. he made his wife infected with something. He have an STD maybe, but this is not our topic. And is this is this a, a sahih um, hadith? Everything is sahih uh, unless you you uh, unless you are a Muslim, you say it is not sahih, because all Muslims they make what is unsahih. They say they say it's weak. Anything embarrassing, they say it is not sahih. No, it's, I'm being no. Honest, I just no problem, but this is what Muslims usually do. You can do the same if you want. I don't care. No, I don't do. No, no, no you no, do the I same. You did exactly. I showed you what Ibn Kathir says about the backbone. You said no, it's not no, the backbone. I was right. I, you got. You got to be honest. I was right. About no, you were not. Lines. No, you were not. This is the translator. He put it between. Listen, you were. No, you were not. Here we go. This is Ibn Kathir, my friend, and you agreed. Ibn Kathir, he says the backbone, and the translator put it, put it between two bracket, correct? So. If yes. Ibn Kathir, if the one who explained the Quran says to you it's a backbone, it means it's the backbone. Bone is a bone, and the testicles yes. are not bones, are they? Isma, uh, uh, listen. Um, um, Ajalan translated it as lions directly. No, he did not. No, this is the translator. The, again, this is the translator. Ajalan did not say that. This is again a false translation. Okay, but you are you talking about the Arabic bit? You're not talking about the translation, are you? I'm talking, I'm about, talking the about the Arabic itself. too. I'm talking about the Arabic too. And look here, you, you see, here we go. Let, let me show you. This is this is a, this is Ibn Kathir. Do you see Ibn Kathir? Why here? Yes. And the translator forgot to to add the word lions. Look at this. Proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs, the backbone of the man yes. and the ribs of the woman. Do you see it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. 
Is it what this is what the Muslims understand for all this time? And I showed you your prophet explained the, the, the Quran. So this is how it's understood. This is what it's meant. And the big he speak Arabic very well. Don't tell me he did not know what he's talking about. So this is what the Arabic word mean about a soul. But today, oh, Muslims, in order to cover the shame and this, the stupidity in the Quran, they try to add between two bracket words. Like as an example, you will see in the hadith says a chromosome. Muhammad, he mentioned chromosome. But they try to cover up. So here, the backbone of the man, backbone is a backbone. It's so clear. Everybody knows what is what exactly. It's a backbone. It's a certain yeah. bone in the body. So a friend of mine, a friend of mine who is Arab, he told me uh, our sub means um, lions. It doesn't mean backbone. Well, he's lying to you, as you see. Yes. Secondly, secondly, as long you agree that Allah is wrong about the women reps. Where a sperm is coming from that's mean this is gonna be from God anyway Let us say for the sake of argument Muhammad was right about the first part, which is not But how God can make such a mistake. You do not know how he he is the one who made the baby He do not know where the sperm of the, the uh, of the man came from and he think that women have a sperm coming from the location of the necklace Because the word Taraib is not the ribs by the way The word yes, Taraib is the location of the necklace in the bones which mean if you put your finger right your neck, you know your neck down Okay, that 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 space where your finger go and that the ribs they meet together the first two bones That is exactly the at the right, huh? The collarbones, the right. collarbones Cor Correct. So this is exactly where Allah claimed that women have a sperm coming from Yeah, I need to ask someone about this. Well, well you need to ask someone. Here we go. This is your Ibn Kathir. You are, you are the one who asked me for Ibn Kathir. We have it in the front of you. We got you, your prophet explaining how this happened. Yes, because when this Arab friend explained it to me, he explained it differently. Friend, your Arab friend is not a friend because your friend should be truthful with you. If he is a friend, he's a liar. And as you see, I'm not showing you anything from my own. This is your Islamic web page. This is your Muslim translation, and this is all full of fabrication. And by the way, Ibn Kathir in English have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Tons of things which is in Arabic is taken out. So people don't laugh. Mm. Yes. Well, is it okay if I get him to give you a call? Um, sure, anytime. Tomorrow, no problem. No next problem. Time you're on. But okay, but let me, uh, let me ask you, uh, my friend. As long you agree that there is you discover with me from what you gave me you are the one who asked me to read those verses correct yes okay from all the verses you gave me we found that they have errors so don't you agree now that Allah can't be God well some things the, the, there's um, there's things that they open they, they are open to more than one interpretation and my friend it's not about interpretation I showed you your prophet interpretation Stop playing games. The word solve is the backbone. And women have no well, sperm. And the gashing fluid, yeah, right. the sexual fluid had nothing to do with the baby for the women. Most of Muslim women actually, they have no orgasm because they do circumcision for them. They don't do yeah, have that's true. you know. So when you have circumcision, yeah. the women, she will never have orgasm. That's mean the women, she will never have a child resemble her. No, but regardless, if the first part is true, if, if the second part is not true, then... It cannot be a true statement. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. That's what I'm saying to you. Because if if one of them is wrong, that means Allah cannot be Allah. You, yeah. Um, For I Allah. didn't agree with. I'll be honest with you. Um, I didn't agree with this statement uh, okay, from the so, beginning. But, but I was trying to. Yeah. I was trying to stretch it some way and find a way to explain it. Okay. Um, but even the second part, the, the you know the tribe part, um, is wrong. Hmm. Okay, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance to give me another, another, uh, like maybe scientific miracle, something amazing. Maybe those are wrong. Maybe Allah, He is right in something else. What do you think? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't, I'm not religious like that, so um, I'm not really, you know, um, I'm not that, I'm not a practicing person, but uh, hmm. um, yeah. So I don't really know many miracles, but I, I just know the, um, the Quran and some other than the B thing. Hmm. And, and there, yeah, is the there, there is something the Quran is like you like something very much in the Quran But there's something you like about it. Oh Yeah, you know chapter 5 where it says if you killed one person It's as if you killed um, all mankind. 
or mm. something. But isn't it, this is a verse was given to Moses, not to Muhammad? To Moses? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I, I didn't read the Torah. Okay, can you read the verse? Yeah, sure. Okay, read the verse for us. In English? Yeah, let me put it for you if you don't have it. This is for the Jews, not for Muslims. Muhammad, he was king. People left and right. Read carefully. Muhammad, he was quoting what the Jews received from Moses. From the Bible. Not in a retaliation of God. Okay, hmm. but it doesn't say anything about um, Musa. It says, "Who is the one who gave the book to Mo to, to the Jews? Isn't it Musa's?" Uh, uh, he, he was God on Mount Sinai. It doesn't think. matter, isn't it? Isn't it Moses, their prophet? Yes. Okay. So we give this order to the Jews. Obviously, it says the children of Israel. Is correct? Yes. Okay. Who is the one who gave them this message, Moses? So this is a verse for the Jews. Okay. Look at the verse after it. The verse after it. This is for the Muslims. The response for those who wage war against Allah and his messenger and do mischief in the land only that they shall be killed and or crucified or their hands shall be uh, 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 and their feet shall cut off in opposite direction or to be excelled from the from the earth and to be the the, the and etc so where is the one who says if somebody is on here who is the one who wage war against Allah anyone he refuses now you yes, right now me right mm -hmm. now, anyone who refuses Islam, waging war against Allah. And what's the interpretation for this verse? You can read any interpretation. It says it clearly. Those are anyone who refuses Islam. As long as long you like Ibn Kathir, right? Don't you like Ibn Kathir? Yes. Okay, Ibn Kathir says, kill the Christians because they refuse to accept Allah and his religion. That make them wage war against Allah. Anyone refuse Islam is wishing war. Can I call you back in five minutes? Yeah, sure. I need to go in. But don't uh, go long because uh, I'm not going to stay forever here. Two minutes, two minutes, I All promise. Right. No problem. Thank you. You're welcome. He will leave Islam sooner or later. If he is really honest, he will leave Islam. And if we go to the same verse, the one we say is, it says, uh, kill an innocent person, you will see Ibn Kathir saying, innocent person is someone, he is a believer. Non-believers are not honest. Actually, there's an interview with the uh, Chawadri, with the BBC. They said to him, why you don't condemn killing of innocent people in, in the attack in London? He says, well, when we say Muslims, when we, we, mean, we say innocent, we mean Muslims. Go watch it on YouTube. When we say innocent, we mean Muslims. For non-Muslims are not innocent, they are guilty. You can go right now and search for the video. And right now, actually, any Muslim, he can call me and I will show you the interpretation of Ibn Kathir. Right now. <coughs> we have Abbas. How are you, Abbas? Uh, peace be with you, brother. How are you? I'm fine. Go ahead. I thought I'd just fill in the store for five minutes. Hmm. Is that all right with you? What do you want to say? Uh, yeah, I'm, I want to talk about this verse, uh, chapter thir um, 5, verse 32. And chapter 5, verse, verse number 32. Okay, what do you want to say to us? Yeah, the, the brother was just mentioning the verse. All right. And you are very rightly said what he said, that that was Allah is saying, we have given to children of Israel. All right. It's true. Okay. But you have to read the both verses together, hmm. 32 and 33. Okay. And now, uh, let me make my point. Uh, verse 32 clearly says... Hmm. Uh, those who uh, spread mischief in the land mm. uh, or the murder only for two reasons mm. you can kill them there mm. are two reasons that you can kill mm. mischief in the land or murder mm. but the next verse 
which is in a way you can say is more superlative, more superior words than the verse 32, which mm. says, mm. if those who wage war against Allah and his messenger, okay, yeah, mm. waging war is coming to kill you, or spreading mischief in the land, same two categories was mentioned in verse 32. Waging war, coming to kill you, or spreading mischief. What mm. are you going to do with them? But in the verse 33, for, which is for Muslims, mm. is give you options. In those options, there are options that you can even let them go. You can even throw them out of the land. Mm. But Allah says he gave the children of Israel only one choice. Okay, let me ask Kill you. Them. Let me ask you. No, let let me I, make my point. No, I, I get me, you. I got you. I got you. Okay. No, so, you you are, but we don't want to. We don't want to waste our time, Abbas. Abbas, first please, first please. First first we don't want to waste our to, time. Just to make it uh, clear. Just wait. We are having a conversation. Did I clear my point? Did Just I wait. make my point? Yeah. No, you you made your point. So you are saying those this who they are waging war against Allah, correct? Those who wage right? war. Those who wage war. We will do this to them. We will cut their hands. We will kill them. We will crucify them. Correct. Mm -hmm. And okay. also let them go as well. You can also let them live as well. Which, okay. Which okay. okay, so but no which problem. No, okay, no problem. So when we say that we kill those who wage war, who is in Islam is the one is waging war? Is it necessarily somebody holding a sword? Uh, I see, but in this context, is talking about waging war. Okay, but I'm asking you in this context yeah. too: is waging war is necessarily holding a sword against Muhammad? It's all depend on the context. Absolutely. My After, friend. Uh, waging war, okay. Waging war so be, if a woman she, she insulted the prophet, if a woman, if a woman she insulted the prophet, is her blood is free? Insulted the prophet. Yeah. Give me an example. Any woman, any man, any me. Like if I insulted the prophet, I'm saying prophet Muhammad is a false man. Is my blood is free or I am not? I am guilty. I should be killed. I don't know where you're going with that. This is not the question. The question is it clear. If I say Muhammad is a false prophet, am I waging war? Am I waging war and I am guilty and I should be killed? Either you say yes or you say no. No, no, no. no. That's not the point. First, no, this is the point. You see, you are avoiding the question. You, because you are, uh, Abbas, don't make me hang up on you. I like to speak to adult. I'm asking you, be, be a man. If a person, I am a Christian prince, I say Muhammad is a false man. Am I guilty? Deserve to die for saying Muhammad is a false man? Yes or no? Are you talking about according to Hadith in the Quran? You are saying to me, are you talking? What's wrong with you? My talk is clear. I am a Christian prince. I said one million times Muhammad is a false man. According to Islam, am I guilty or I am innocent? Should I be killed or I can live? You are spreading mischief. Of course, you are spreading mischief, and okay. you going to so I should be so I should be what? killed. So I should be that killed. Let me answer. Let no, me answer. No, give me an answer. I, I, yes. You just said. Give me the answer. You just said I'm doing answer. mischiefment. The verse saying those who do mischiefment kill them. Correct. I'm giving you the answer. Mm. Uh, verse give you four options. You can let them go as well. Depend how much mischief you okay, are. Okay. So you must. And now you can decide you if can you wanna want to cut. Okay, guys, look what he said. This this guy, what he don't dare to say it. He's saying, oh, Christian prince, if we capture you, we can either kill you, or crucify you, or cut your hands and feet. Or on put nails in your eyes, or we can let you go. It's up to us. But he will not say it. I didn't say you didn't let me finish my point. You, you just said you me. just said you are doing mischiefment. Isn't it the verse in the Quran says those who do mischiefment kill them? I was making my point and you cut me in the middle. <laughs> okay, make your point. I want a clear answer. No, I want a clear answer. You are a coward and you you are a coward, you will never answer. I'm asking you, Christian Prince who say Muhammad is a false prophet. Do he deserve according to Islam, not according to my opinion or your opinion, according to Islam? Do he deserve to die, to be killed? I will give you, I will give you the answer. My friend, why the answer is so hard? Either you say yes or you say no. You're not letting me. You're not letting no, me it's, it's very easy. Yes or no. You always ask questions, yes or no. There's explanation. Yes, then you can explain yes or no, because the answer should be one with them. It can't be both. Okay. If I if I yes. say Muhammad is a false prophet, listen, listen to me now. Listen to me now. If you spread a mischief, you're gonna be warned. You're gonna be tell, please don't do that. You gotta stop it. Abbas, I think it's really bad. Listen to me. Finish. Okay. Let me finish. <coughs> then yeah, you go, you're gonna be warned. But if you don't stop, you keep spreading it. Then these four punishments will apply on you. One of them. Okay. Yes. Muslim, they, they, Muslim, they send me one million, one million warning, saying to me, stop attacking the prophet. So according to you, you have a duty to kill me now. No, no, no. It is the it is the government, <laughs> not individual. Individual who, have no right. Who to is kill the me. okay? Who is the one who have the uh, who is the one who have the right to kill me? 
it will be the governments. It will come through the legislation. What government? What government? What government? Islamic well, government, right? So according to you, okay, according to you, uh, according to you, I should be killed by Islamic government, correct? No, it is their decision, not my decision. No it's problem. But according to you, you just said, everybody heard you, because I say this is waging war against Islam. I am saying, saying things against Muhammad, so I should be killed by the government. That's what you said. Are you going to be a, a, a banished from the land? The <laughs> <laughs> four, four punishment will be lost. Get lost. Get lost. I don't respect you. You see, I have to play around the bushes to get an answer with those people. I have to shout. I have to scream. I have to. You have to play games with them. They are like you know. You play cats and dogs, and you know. I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame. They have no respect. To themselves. I mean, the answer is so clear. But because he live in the West, because he knew he cannot say that, because he knew that this is will be, will, 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 will he, he might, he, they might even go after him if he says that. So he don't dare the coward to say it. They are not proud about their religion no more. They are potatoes. And here we have a story about a woman. She insulted the prophet. What happened? The man, the owner, the Muslim killed her. And what happened? Muhammad he says, Court, 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 who is the one who killed this woman? Bring him here. Well, they brought the man. He said to him, Prophet, this woman, she slander you. She defame you. She insult you. I told her not to do that. And then I took my dagger and I killed her. I inserted my dagger inside her stomach and she was bleeding, showering her child, which was between her legs. And this is why I killed her. And then the prophet, he's the judge. He's the prophet of Allah. He is the government of Allah. He said, well, her, I bear witness that her blood is for free. She's a woman. She is not even a man. Her blood is for free. And this potato, he will say to me, this is not sahih. It's sahih. Do you see how we get you busted? Or what the women did. She insulted Muhammad. She don't like him. She believe he is a false prophet. The man he killed her, and look here, maybe the man is lying. Maybe this is not the reason he killed her for Muhammad. Just because he said she insulted you, he said, Okay, her, her blood is for free. So when they say to you in, in Islam, we fight only those who fight us, this is what fighting them mean. You refuse Islam. Is it Muhammad? He says, I've been ordered to kill all mankind unless they convert to Islam. Hmm. This is what Muhammad been ordered to do. His job is to kill all mankind. Either they convert or they die. It's in the front of you. It's not you waging war. You are already in war with Islam if you don't believe in Islam. You do not need to carry a war. You know, many stupid people in this world, they think if you attack Islam, they attack you all. This is not true. Muhammad, he sent the three letters to three kings saying, convert or else, convert or die. Muhammad, he said, I am big, being victorious by terror. Let us see the other Muslim who is trying to call us what he want to say. <coughs> yes, I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you? Yes, um, I was I was listening to the person that called you before. Okay. Yes, um, yeah, and I read the verse and I also read the tafsir. Um, it's I, I, if if you if you are completely honest, you can't deny the fact that it's talking about the children of um, Bani Israel. 
I am the one who told you that. <laughs> yes, and I read. Yes, and I went to read the interpretation. And okay. um, yes, um, I can send it to you on Skype if you want. Yes, but this one yeah. I said. I said this is about the children of Israel. Yes, I read the um, Tafsir of Ibn Abbas, and it's talk, it talks about um, you know um, the children of Israel. Okay, so you are repeating what I said. So and now, what do you think? Yes. What do you think about your prophet <coughs> taking the side of a man he slaughter a woman? She is a female slave black slave and he slaughtered her the, the muslim and just because she insulted the prophet the prophet he said her blood is for free there's no punishment what do you think about that uh, is that in, where is that in the where is that what did you get that from this is the the hadith the story is written by you muslims not by me is, is it on the screen now yeah I, I will send you the link too if you want you can open it and read it well, look, I don't, I don't want to um, do what the person before did, you know, trying to give his own interpretation. If, 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 some, if, if that's not, what it's I don't care about the other one, my friend. This is a story. It's in the front of you. It's very clear. The man, he killed the women. The prophet, he says, bring him because he thought it's just a crime. And the man, he stood up and he explained what happened. He says, she is slandering you. She used to slander and defame the messenger of Allah a great deal. And he would rebuke her, but she would not pay heed. And he would forbid her from doing that, but she ignored him. The blind man uh, said, One night I mentioned the Prophet of Allah, and she slandered him. I could not bear it, so I went and got my dagger, which I thrust in her stomach, and I, uh, 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 I leaned open it. So like this guy is really want to kill her. He's, he he hate her very much for doing that, so he killed her, and and her child actually. By the way, the hadith says in in different place where her child was between her legs, and he was showered by the blood. And then what? When the prophet when the prophet asked him why, look, uh, why she did that? She explained that because she is slandering, she is insulting. What the prophet judgment is? No problem. There's no punishment. Here we go. And that's that's a um sahih. This is sahih. Yeah, here we go. This is the reference in the front of your eyes. And okay, and who's reporting the story? Whoever report Ibn Abbas. You mentioned to me Ibn Abbas a second ago, so you cannot say he's not good. Yes. Okay, so this is Ibn yes. Abbas. Yeah, well, that's horrible. If, okay. if that's true, that's horrible. Well, Muhammad, he did more than stories. Muhammad, he sp split a woman two pieces by tying her legs to two different camels, and she is 80 years old just because she insulted him too. And was 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 she um, a, a kafir? Or for what? sure, she's a kafir. Anyone is a kafir. All people are kafir for Muhammad. Anyone who don't agree with him, say to him, yes, sir, is a kafir. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to deny it. It's true because you know. Have you heard about the Charlie Hebdo case? Yeah, I France? know about it. Yeah, but this is not a big yes, deal. I mean, this is uh, this is normal in Islam. The Muslims no, do that. Uh, my, my friend, my friend, Muhammad, he did that in his time. I don't care what Muslims do, because Muslims can be right, can be wrong. Like today, I cannot judge Christ by me because I can be a bad person. Correct? No, but if you get your teaching from the correct. Bible, so then this is why we don't we don't go after a Muslim doing something. We have to go to the roots. This is Muhammad. Yes, it's, it's horrible what I've read. Okay. Um, I must say, I'm not going to be so lying. Why, why you want to stay as a Muslim then? Why you don't leave Islam? Well, you know, um, you know, because of my family and stuff like so that. So what your family? I mean, you are a smart person and you know it's a stupid religion. It's an evil religion. It's an ugly religion full of lies. So because of my family, I will believe in stupid things. That's not right for you, my friend. You are smarter than this. In my, in my heart, I know that something is fishy, um, but okay, you know, I can't. I can't, my, friend, I can't my, friend, my friend, I am not a Christian because my father is a Christian. Absolutely not. We, I don't, you know, I don't care if he's a Christian or not. This is his business because this is a personal choice. He will go to heaven or he will go to hell. It's up to him. So I'm a Christian because I made a decision that this is the right thing for me. I'm asking you now, just because of your family. They are Muslims. You will stay as a Muslim, but you you agree right now with me that this is horrible. Quran is full of miracles, full of madness, stupid stories, flying carpet, uh, 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 
the, the birds who are looking for women who have uh, hair and uh, have no hair in her legs ha the ant who is said to the ant Suleiman is going to crush you and Suleiman he laughed at her word but the ant is a mute cannot even hear or even talk they uh, you know creatures they communicate but they not they don't talk he it says he he heard her words so how in the world this can be from God it's obvious and you are a smart person who you got God bless you he gave you the internet he gave you a computer he gave you technology he gave you things he gave us a chance me and you to meet and talk so this is a blessing from God that you are in the end of the world I am in the other side of the world yet we are talking this is really an opportunity might not repeat again so I'm asking you as long you agree that this is a garbage cult why you stay there just say I am out yeah, well, I have I have a um, Arab friend who explains things for me. He reads it in My friend, Arabic. Your, Arab, your friend is not a friend because he's a friend. He should be honest with you and tell you the truth. You just told me he told you that the backbone means something else. He is not a friend. My friend is the one who honest with me. It doesn't matter what I'm talking about. Anything else, he is not a friend. Yeah, um, yeah. Like in, like I said, in my heart, I know. Um, some things are fishy and okay, in your you heart know, something uh, is fishy so now it's it's not in your heart it's, it's in I'm, your brain. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna be like um you know denying things that are so true or give my own interpretation like i had the person before you he was um trying to make it fit with the west and you know um but you know if that's what he said then you just gotta ad admit it you friend, can't deny everything it. i say everything I, I never will say something unless it's true and i can prove it otherwise people will laugh at me Otherwise, and even, 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 because even, that, even the Christians, they will lose their trust on me. You know, this is, and not only that, and on top of that, I have to fear God, because if I'm lying to you, that's mean I'm not Christian no more. I lost, I lost my salvation. So I have no reason to lie to you, my friend. But in Islam, officially, you can lie. Chapter three, verse number twenty-eight. There's tons, tons of verses. You can lie, and you will not be questioned by Allah. Even the Quran says. You know, Allah will not question you for false oath. You can take even a false oath in Islam. In Christianity, Jesus said, "Say yea, yea, or nay, nay," which means you cannot take an oath. Anything else is from the devil. Those who take oath, they are obviously lying. They, 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 they jump to say, "I will take an oath," because now he's saying to us, "I lie all my life, but today I decide to be honest." So I'm going to take an oath. A Christian person should not take an oath because he should be always telling the truth without oath. So we have a religion saying you can lie. You can make a statement which is a false statement. You can say something in your heart, but in, in your in your lips is something else. It's okay. okay. Yeah. And here we go. This is, Ibn, this is Ibn Abbas, the one you like. It says. I don't like him. I just looked at. Doesn't the matter if you like him or not. Who cares about it? It's not about liking. We're not taking selfie with him. But this is what the teaching is. It says here. That the Muslim who take non-Muslims as a friend and he is sincere. If he is sincere, he who is sincere. Yes, I know, take, I know. Yeah. So if you do that, you have no honor, no protection, no mercy from Allah. Unless, unless what? Unless that you guard yourself against them, save yourself from them, take it as it were security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart dislikes this. This is the devil. I know, I know, I know. Your friend was doing taqiyya with you, my friend. Or tawriya. He was doing taqiyya, exactly. He's trying to protect Islam against your thought. You have a question? He knew that you have a yes, question. I, I know. Listen, I know. I, I come I come from a Muslim-majority country, and I know um, what uh, the things that were told about Christians, Jews, and unbelievers. So okay. um, I'm not going to be here. Are, are, where are you from? Are you Arab? I am an Arab, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I said I am an Arab. Yes. <laughs> uh, are you are you are you are you Arab yourself? I am an Arab. Yeah. Are uh, you? Yeah. Well, then you know um the things that you know we we're, we're told about Christians and Jews from exactly. a very young age. Yeah. So now, um, my so friend, yeah, I know about this. I'm not going to deny them. My friend, let us let us be smart. You are an intelligent man, and today you call me for a reason. And you you just arrived to a conclusion that this is horrible, and we heard you saying that. And this is a great news for you. You are making your mind and you are awake. So why you don't say I am out? I just want to ask you one more question if that's okay for you. Good. If, if you're not in a hurry or something. No problem. Um, I've heard one of the things that make me wonder 
um, so much is um, praying in the direction of the Kibra. It doesn't make sense to me because if God is omnipresent and everywhere, then there, there shouldn't be a direction to pray. God is everywhere. You can pray in whichever direction you want. So that's one of the things that doesn't really make sense to me. Um, and I've heard many people say that the direction wasn't even chosen by Allah. It was chosen by Umar, but I, I don't have evidence for that. I'm not sure. Do you know yes. anything about that? Yes, it says, وَفَقَنِي رَبِّي فِي ثَلَاثِ My Lord, he agreed with me in three things. In fact, there's many hadith says he agreed with me in seven. Some they say ten. So Allah, he agreed with Umar in three things. And one of them is the direction and making the, the, the Kaaba as a, a, a prayer station. And here you need to ask yourself, what kind of God he forgot about the Kaaba all those years. Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem all these years. Suddenly, Umar al-Khattab, he said, okay, well, let us pray to Jerusalem, pray to Kaaba, you know, and that supposedly was an idea from uh, Umar, and Allah, he liked the idea. And not only that, uh, you know, uh, Allah, he took the, the words of Muhammad, and, uh, you know, uh, he, he brought the verse exactly as Umar, he said, and you because, are the one who said to me a few minutes ago, if you remember, yeah. that the Quran itself is a miracle, right? Yes. Okay. Should Allah then copy Quran from Umar? If nobody can make Quran, but Allah takes yeah. his Quran from Umar, how that can be? Yeah. Well, in the Quran, it says, um, I can't remember the verse and so on, but it says that with Allah is talking and it says, I've, I've chosen the direction for prayer for you. So basically he said, I've friend, chosen no, no the problem, direction. No problem. But you see, this is Islamic reference and this is Muslims yes. who preserve those yes. references. It says, read carefully with me. So the verse, the verse was revealed the same as I had said. Do you see it? Yes. But I thought nobody can make Quran like, like the Quran. But Allah here is copying Omar and he put what Omar said exactly in the Quran. Yes, because, you know, it's hard for me to admit it, but it, even if something is written in the Quran, we don't have a guarantee that's 100% from Allah. It could have been, My you friend, know, who wrote about it's 100% or not. Now we have a, 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 a story where all the Muslims agree upon it, that Omar, he said something, Allah, he take it and he put it in the Quran. The Muslims agree, not me. This is not a Christian uh, 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 reference so as long the Muslims they agree that yes Allah he learned from he took from Omar Omar he says something Allah he take it he make a Quran that's mean Omar he's making a Quran too yes um yeah that, that doesn't sound right secondly is I, is second, I denied the secondly Quran order. if not Omar Muslim women they will not wear hijab I mean how in the world this is happening Omar, the story says that Omar, he keep asking Muhammad to make his wives wear hijab, wear hijab, wear hijab. Muhammad, he don't answer. Then one day, uh, Omar, he made fun of Sauda. She was doing poo-poo. So the reason for the hijab for all Muslim in the world is the poo-poo, the ass of Sauda, and the, 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 the savage Omar who is making fun of her ass? This is the reason? All this time, Allah did not notice that women, they should wear hijab. Just because Omar, he said something, and again, again, as Omar said, Allah took the verse, he put it in the Quran, and he made the order for hijab. Yes. Yeah, that, does, that, that doesn't sound right at all with me. Okay. So, I mean, did, have you ever seen something we uh, today, which we spoke about sound right, anything? There's nothing There's nothing in this book sound right? Yeah, well, you, you know the things that uh, were told, um, you know, some parts of the world about, you know, um, how Muhammad um, was like one of the best generals, one of the best persons and that kind of stuff. Our friend Muhammad uh, is the um, best man between all mankind, but this is always a fabrication yeah. of those, you know, who wrote this history about the best man? The Muslims, if the Muslims describe Muhammad as horrible as they are describing him after they say he is the best man. So imagine how was bad he is. To make it simple for you, you know this. You listen, know the story. Listen, 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 my friend. Listen carefully. Let us say I was in the army of Hitler, and Hitler was victorious. And now I'm writing how amazing Hitler is, and I say there's a guy, he have a slave, and the slave she was insulting Hitler, and then Hitler said, "Who killed this slave? Bring him here." And then the guy he stood and he say, "Hitler." This slave was insulting you. And Hitler, because he's amazing and he's all justice, he said, because she is insulting me, yeah. her, his, her blood is for free. Remember, this is a history written by the Muslims. So if this is the great man, the great history, 
The Muslims here, when they wrote those stories, they are proud of it. They are not reporting something to be ashamed of. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. And even be between the hadiths, there's disagreement uh, between different schools of thought. Our friends, no, the just... disagreement, let me tell you about the disagreement. This is all is a, is a, is a, is a garbage talk. Because the Muslims, when they disagree about something, is just to support a propaganda. As an example, if you are a Shia, you say this book I don't agree with. If you are a Sufi, everyone here has his own propaganda, so to support his ideas. Yeah. Otherwise, all those hadith, there's no guarantee. And the Quran, too, there's no guarantee. Okay. If we go now in the page number A in the Quran, I don't know if you have the Arabic Quran. It says that this Quran, according to recitation of the following, or oh, Hafs, Hafs, Ibn Asim, and Asim, Ibn blah, 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 blah. Okay, what is the Quran? There's no Quran. All of this is recitation. Yes. Okay, what and is the proof? Truth. What is the proof that this is the true Quran? If Asim himself accused by a Muslim to be a fraud, and there's, there's a Quran in Welsh, uh, you know, people in Morocco, they have uh, Welsh or Welsh, I don't know what it's called. There's yeah, there's, there are, there's many Quran, <laughs> yeah, correct. But, yes, but, my uh, friend, my friend, but, but I'm trying to tell you that the idea of who support and who agree, this is depend in the propaganda and the agenda. Uh, as an example, the king of Saudi Arabia right now, to support his royal family, they push some hadith in the front, don't go against the ruler, you know what I mean? It's a game. It's just yeah. to control. So yeah, political. Or exactly. So but but the hadith is there and nobody can deny it. But if you have a if you have an agenda, you can say this is weak anytime you want. You can say I don't agree with it. Because yeah, you are not true. saying I don't agree with Muhammad, but they will say, Oh, this guy, I don't trust this uh, report. You see, like to avoid to be like you are a guy denying what Muhammad said, you say, I don't I don't trust this guy. But you don't you don't dare to say I don't trust Muhammad. So this is a dirty game. Like when we show the Muslims saying the Quran saying that the sun set in murky water, they start saying to us, uh, it doesn't what? say that. It, say that again, sun sitting in what? In a muddy hot water. <coughs> in a what? What do you mean in setting it in a water? The Quran says the sun set in a muddy water, chapter 18, verse number 86. How how, how is that possible? You can't set in a this is what the, the Quran is saying. <laughs> they ask Muhammad, tell us about Zul Qurnayn. Can you show me that, please? Yeah, it's in the screen. Now, every Muslim who will defend Islam, he will give you his own propaganda answer. Oh, it doesn't say really. This is how Zul Qurnayn he thought. It doesn't say that. Read it carefully. The Allah is reporting that Zul Qurnayn is not talking. Saying that when his Allah he established for him in the earth, what's Hamia? Hamia mean hot, boiling. Oh, yeah. So we establish for him. They, they are asking you. They, they ask you the same as uh, the the other stories. You know, they ask you. They ask you about the 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 crescent moon. Uh, they are asking him how the crescent moon happened. So he could not. He have no answer. He says this is for timing, <laughs> but it's not a question. They are asking him how this happened. How this moon sometimes is crescent, sometimes it's round, but he have no answer. He said this is for timing. Then they said they asking you about Zulkarnain, and there is no guy. His name is Zulkarnain. Have you ever heard of a guy have a name Zulkarn? The word Karnain in Arabic mean two horn. Have you ever yeah, heard of a human have two horn? No. So oh, the um, thingy, um <laughs> there was. There was a legend. There was some legend, legends. Yeah, I think it, I know where you refer to. Alexander the Great. There's there is, there is a le legend about written about Alexander the Great yeah. by a Syrian person, a, a person from Syria. He wrote a story about Zulkarnain, full of fiction. But the, the the person is real, but the story around him is fiction. So Muhammad, he took it and look. He said we established for him in the earth and we gave him all means. So he's a prophet of Allah, and then so he followed the way. Until when he reached the sitting place of the sun, can you tell me where the sitting place of the sun? It does wrong. It can scientifically. It can be. You know, he doesn't have. A but he's saying until he reached the sitting place of the sun. This is the one is talking is Allah, not the guy. Well, that's not right. It doesn't make sense. That's that's stupid. Not only that's right. So it's not a and, place and because then, if you're in China, right? Yeah, uh, it's going to be different. No, my friend. Not, the sunset everywhere. I'm talking to you right now. It's sunset in my in my in my house, and I can see the sun setting from my window. I do not need to go anywhere. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Until until when he reached the setting place of the sun, he found it. When you say I found it, I'm reporting a find. Correct? It's yes. a fact. 
it's not like he thought as Muslim they try to say he found it sitting in a spring no, of Hamia and the Muslim they say oh he meant like when he saw the Sun going in the ocean oh first of all my friend it doesn't say ocean it says a spring and a spring is not an ocean correct yes yeah, spring is okay. water. Yeah. Yeah. why it says a spring because there's legions about the, uh, the uh, you see, it's still water and spring water. No, there is there is like uh, many they could not explain why some places in the in the earth have boiling water in the ground. So many they have oh, legend yeah. that this is because the sun jump in that water and that water this is the the, the place where the sun uh, sleep. So this is a legend Muhammad he took it he put it in the Quran, and then he found near it near what. Near where the sun sit in place. <laughs> how how in yeah. the world this is? And then the Muslims, in order to save, uh, you know, they give you this false translate uh, interpretation. But Muhammad, as usual, he cannot keep his mouth shut. Muhammad, he he is a he's a very good man in in a, when it's come to stupidity. So he cannot keep his mouth shut. And look what he said: that Muhammad he was riding in his donkey as usual, and Abu there he was behind him. I was sitting I behind. Why, yes, Listen. sorry. I don't understand why you have to lie in order to, because it's a matter of salvation. If you lie about your salvation, you're like you're fooling to your, you're fooling yourself. Exactly. Really. But it's, and that's but, why. But because sometimes in I don't Islam, my friend, because in Islam it's allowed to lie, so it's a practice, it's a tradition, it's religious. So it's a, it's good to lie in Islam. Actually. There's many, many Muslim scholars. They are, they are proud about somebody lie to someone and made him convert to Islam. It's not a shame because supposedly he is saving him. So I was sitting behind yes. the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was sitting. Uh, he asked, do you know where this set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best. He said, it's set in a spring of warm water. Do you see it? Yes, Hamia. So why they lie to us? They say, this is how Zulkarnain he thought. And this is not what it says. Do you understand? Yeah, things are clear. I don't understand. That, that's one of the things that kind of makes me wonder. Like, if he's, he clearly says this, why do you have to give your own interpretation? And yes, yeah, sometimes I don't understand it. So, you know, after all this conversation, my friend, what do you think? Why do you want to leave Islam? Well, to be honest, in my heart, I, I just, you know, I, I try to like explain and say maybe there's another way. But when you read it, if, you, if you're honest to yourself um you know in a bit intelligent you don't have i mean you don't really have to lie because you're lying to yourself if that's what he says um that's what it is but for me to you know to go out officially and say um that i left it you know there's going to be a bit of consequences you know where i'm from is not that easy to say look i just left it so um, even so, so let me understand you you are saying you are not going to say i left but in your heart you left yeah, I always had one. Um, I always wondered, and even this going in in the direction of the Kibla didn't make you, sense to me. You are, you are a person who just left Islam, but you don't want to say I left Islam. I got it. Okay, good. Yeah, and where I'm from is difficult. Um, I understand. Um, so, my friend, I'm happy for you. You call me to prove to me Islam to be true, and we have the end of the conversation. You agree with me that Islam is a false religion. That's wonderful. Happy for you. Well, if, you're, if, if I'm completely honest, um. I'll have to admit, logically, I'll have to admit that, you know, scientifically, there are some things that don't make sense. Uh, you know, the sun setting again, it, it doesn't make sense. You can lie, you can say, okay, it's how someone saw it and that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, you're fooling yourself, to be honest. And I don't want to do that either, because, you know, it's a matter of salvation. It's not. Exactly. Uh, so my and friend, if I have to lie, then I'm lying my friend, to myself, I, no one I, else. I, I, will, I, will, I will let you think. You, you know, I know you left Islam today. I'm happy for you. But I want you, I want you to think about reading the gospel, reading the word of Christ. The, the angel. The angel, exactly. And think about accepting the true word of God. And you will see how amazing the Messiah is. I yeah, invite because, you uh, to, to accept the where Messiah. Where I'm from, I also see Christian people. Yeah, Christian people, they, they tend to... I'm, I'm not trying to say anything bad, but they always tend to be happier and you know um, more um, happier and also more. They're not that nervous, you know, um, com compared to us. We always know. My nervous friend, and you go to the mosque. Trust. You go right now. You go tomorrow. Go in the mosque in the morning. Watch the people going inside the mosque. They are fine. They go from the mosque. Everybody's upset. Everybody's angry. 
you know it's a place uh, yeah. where, where hate is generated we as a Christian when we go in the church we pray for all the world Muslim Jews Hindus Buddhas atheists it is what Jesus said pray for those who curse you pray for those who uh, insult you those who they are discriminating you those who they are killing you Jesus in the cross he says to the Jews when the Jews are screaming at him your blood is in our hand he said father forgive them they don't know what they are doing this is the difference my friend this is why we are happy people to be following Christ because Christ he take our anger anger is a poison will kill you hate is a poison inside you you will be the first victim of your hate because you will never enjoy anything you will not enjoy even a second with your children it's because you are you think this is why Muslims always they think there's a conspiracy against us those are Islamophobic those are uh, attacking us those but the, 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 the truth is the opposite go and see how many people just killed in the last seven days in the name of Allah in Nigeria like in Nigeria they yes. the, in Nigeria they release hundreds of girls imagine they are kidnapping them for what they kidnap them just to rape them and make them have babies that's all they yeah. want the baby I raised I raised yeah, I raised this issue with my friend and he said, uh, for example, ISIS, he said those are not um, Muslim. But then again, if you think about Why it, then whose Muslims? name are Muhammad, he, he did the same. Muhammad, he kidnapped the women, he raped the women, and he took their babies. What? what? <laughs> you see, if you are following Jesus, how I can say to you, you are not a Christian? If you are following Muhammad, how I can say to you, you are not a Muslim, correct? Yeah, that's true. And also the fact that, you know, um, when, when asked, they say we're killing in the name of um, well, they're not they're not saying any other names so yeah if you think about it the teachings and the things that they're getting from is you know from the quran or the hadith or one not correct my friend well so, I'm, yeah i'm happy that i have you today feel free to call me again if you wish and if you can let your arab friend call me that would be a good challenge tell him to yes. call. tell him hey listen yeah. listen as long you I'm, I'm, tell him i'm sure you can do better than me because you speak arabic i want you to get this guy his name is a christian prince busted Yes, um, he's from Egypt. No matter where, don't tell me. I don't care. I don't care how big he is, how small he is, how long his beard. All of them, they are the same for me. They will end as they yes. enter. You know, just let yeah. them come. And then, and you can ask any sheikh you want. Not only this guy. I mean, any sheikh. The bigger he is, the better it is. Trust me. And you will have fun. You will have fun. Trust me. No, you you will love yeah. it. For, for me, it's, for me, it's clear. Um, regardless. Um. <laughs> But well, um, are you, are you are you coming on tomorrow? So I don't know. My maybe I, I, I have no idea. When I come sometime. I, I, if I can, I will be here tomorrow. Subscribe, uh, turn yeah. on your notification, and if, if we are here, you will you will know. Okay, and I'll let him sp uh, speak to you. But for me, yeah, for me, for me, um, it's it's clear. Um, you know, in my heart, I always had doubts and stuff, but now they, you know, you made them clear. All right, my friend. Well, I'm happy to have you, and thank you for calling. Take care. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, you see, he called me to, to prove to me Islam, and he ended leaving Islam. That's wonderful. What do you want more? We have a Muslim. Prove to me Islam, and he ended leaving Islam. That's wonderful. What do you want more? Mute YouTube, please. Hello? Oh, snap. Hello? I hello. Yes. Oh. Um, oh snap! Mute, you, mute YouTube, please. Is, yeah, this is hello, Christian Yes. 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 Oh, um, oh snap! Mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube. <laughs> she hang up. We have a Muslim, his name is Malik, he says a three in one, he is laughing. He is laughing at his God. Isn't it your God, he says that Isa is a three in one? Are you there, Malik? Isn't it this is your Quran saying that Isa is a three and one in the same time? Where are you, where are you, Mr. Malik? How a three can be one? Malik is saying that. Malik is making fun of his God. He's saying this is stupid. How a three can be one? This is a stupid, my friend. I mean, who in the world want to believe in three as one, except if he is a stupid? That is Allah. 
Allah is saying that Isa is a three, but yet he is one. And Malik, you don't agree with Allah. How are you doing, Malik? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Hi. Um, so I wanted to ask you some questions about Christianity. Sure, go ahead. But our topic is about Islam. Why you don't want to talk about Islam? I'm just curious. Um, I I see you always uh, debate Muslims and um, hmm. you know and um, okay, go ahead. To try to prove them wrong. So uh, no problem. So you know, I hear about all these child molestations that priests do. You know, and um, hmm. and uh, you know also the nuns. Uh, why is that? Let me ask you, those, you said the child molestation, what the age of those kids? Some of them are teenagers, some of them are little kids, such like as what? five like years what old. Age? Give me, give me age, example. Give me age. Like five-year-old children. Okay, so five, six-year-olds, is that, is that the age? Yeah. All right, but is, that's mean your prophet is a child molester. Those priests, they will go to hell. Jesus said, those who heard the little one is better for them to put a milestone in their neck and they throw themselves in the deep ocean which means jesus already said they will end in the worst hell fire ever how you explain to me that as long you are against child molestation for someone she is six or seven that you have a prophet who marry a child she is six years old so then what why but why do the christians do it you know they these my friends first of all i can show you i can show you tons of muslims so, arrested hold on so, so you're saying to me those are the worst of us they are criminals they are not christians because the christians is those who follow jesus not those who call themselves christian this is why jesus said not everyone says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will is that the will of god no so the question is as long you agree that they are child molestation people and they are bad and they are ugly. How come your prophet is following them? Who is following who? Those people, they are fo not following Jesus. They are following Muhammad. This is Sunnah. The practice of a child molestation is the practice of Islam. He married a child. She is six years old. Explain to me. Go ahead. Lord. That, okay. Yes, he married her. Mm -hmm. But he didn't have sex with her until she became of age of puberty when she became a woman. Really? But it says in the front of me that she was nine. Yes, so okay. when she was nine. So, so you are saying to me, in the age of nine, I, somebody can molest you. I mean, in today's society, it's different. What in today's society? Here we go. See, you know, yeah, you know this is there's nothing called today's society, and there's no nothing is called in the before society. Only criminals they used to do that. Can you name for me one person ever in the history of the Arabia before he used to do that? Never. I'm sorry. Can you, you name for me anyone before Muhammad? He used to have sex with the children. Um. I don't know, mm. uh, but um, so this is not what the society is. did. This is not uh, what the society. There is nobody in the society of Muhammad before Muhammad have sex with the children. So Muhammad is the first to start this tradition of having sex with the children. Secondly, Aisha she never have her period, and this is why in the hadith it says the reason that Aisha she was allowed to play with dolls even she was fourteen years old because she don't have her period yet. So Aisha she is fourteen according to the hadith and yet she is considered as a child and this is why the prophet allow her to play with her dolls are you searching prophet google i hear google talking i don't hear you hold on i'm holding And hello, I'm 
Um, anyways, like I was trying to say, when, like, um, hmm. at a certain age, you know, girls were expected to get married. Mm. So, so oh, you agree? Okay, so now, is, was your prophet, was your prophet a good man? For us, those who do that, they would put them in jail. According to Islam, right now, the Muslim, they practice this in Islamic countries. They marry girls at the age of six. Are you against that? Today, they marry it because this is a sunnah. Whatever Muhammad he says, you follow. Are you willing to give your daughter at the age of six to a man? He's a Muslim. I well, oh god. Um, like, oh gosh. Um, she. What is that? Well, I wouldn't. When she became a teenager, if she wanted to get married, yes, I would allow her to, to my get friend, married. My friend, with my respect to you, my friend, my, with my respect to you, I said six years old. Your prophet, he made he made it clear that this is everything he do, Muslim, they follow. Muhammad, he pray like this, you pray like this. Muhammad, he marry like that, you marry like this. This is sunnah. So Muhammad, he marry at the age of six. If a big sheikh like Shabir Ali, he come now, and he want to ask for your hand, or Zakir Naik. The, 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 uh, Zakir Naik is 54 years old. Your daughter is six years old. And he came to marry your daughter according to Allah teachings. Are you willing to do that? I would advise her to wait. Are you advise your six years old? To, uh, guys, she will advise her six years old daughter to wait. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, which means but your daughter, she is six years old. She doesn't know even what management. What, what do you mean? You would advise her to wait? No, no, hold on, hold on. You know, I, when you say I would advise my daughter who is six years old to wait, I mean, are you are you serious? She is six years old daughter. She is eating chocolate and she have ton chocolate in her face. This is the girl you want to advise her to wait to get married later. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want her to get married because she's still a child. But thank you very much. So Muhammad is marrying the children. Is, so bro, as long you are against, so do you consider? Do you, are you saying that having sex with a child is a crime? No, because it's different in that history of time. My bro. friend, stop talking about that time. We are talking about today. You Muslims, you follow what Muhammad. Muhammad, he he came he came with the message for all time, not for that time. That's what Muslim says. So Muhammad, when he practiced something, Muslims they have to follow. Today, two thousand nineteen. If a Zakir Naik at the age of 54. Say, it doesn't say that girls have to get married at a certain age. It, so. says, it says that even the Quran mentions speaking about divorcing children. Do you know that? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. What if we show you to you in the Quran? What you would yeah. do? <clears throat> do you see my screen? <laughs> do you see my screen? Here we go. Google again. Hold on. Do you see the screen? It says divorcing children. What do you think about that? The Quran have rules about divorcing children. Hold on. Wait. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Look, hmm. if she, you cannot, okay, so in the, you know, it is in the hadith, you know, it, you cannot force anyone, your daughters to marry anyone they don't want to. <laughs> I was talking about so, force. You can give a child uh, some candies and she will go with you to the bed. She's like, she's a child. She doesn't know what she's doing. What are you talking about? She is a kid. So if a, if a filthy man, he gave a That's child some candies, he can take her to his home. This is not like, listen, I'm listen, saying. don't tell me you cannot force. Because she's not mature enough. Thank I you. Wouldn't, so why, I wouldn't, so why, I why yes, okay, she is not mature. She is a child. Why you're a prophet? Let me ask you, why you're a prophet at the age of 54, he choose to have a child in his bed?
what that present to you I mean he have already many wives why he choose there's many women they are women already women growing women choose one she is maybe 17 18 the, you know child she's a, she, this is six six years old she is six years old how in the world somebody is 54 he go after what he saw in that child make him get tempted Oh, but he okay they didn't consummate the marriage until she was older my friend he was more less than her between six to nine at the age of nine he did intercourse this is what the hadith is saying so at the age of nine he did boom 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 so your prophet was molesting the child because molestation not necessarily having sex he is molesting her so from the age of six to the age of nine she is his wife already his wife he can do whatever he want with her at the age of nine, he did intercourse. She he is not engaged to her at the age of six. He did marry her at the age of six. So now we have a man, he is 54 years old. We have a child, she is six years old. What they share together. Someone, he is a man at this age, prophet of God, busy delivering the message of Allah. And we have a child, she is a six years old. So what we will do now? What is the reason for that? Okay, but what about so it said you know Mary was about like twelve years old when she was married. My to friend, Joseph. who said that? This is, who, said, who, who said that? Who is the stupid? He said that to you. There's nowhere it says that. This is stupid. Secondly, the first baby Mary she have according to the Quran she have no man. Are you saying to me the Quran is lying because the Quran said women Mary I'm she was listen it says in Christianity well no nowhere in Christianity it says Mary she was 12 years old when she gave birth this is a lie oh really yeah this is a lie show me the verse where there's nowhere secondly Mary she was a virgin what merit according to the Quran Mary she never have a man and the first child she have in order for anyone to have a child she have to be a woman a child cannot give birth so she have to be a woman this is number one number two the child she have is without a man in both book in the Bible and in the Quran how old are you uh, miss if you don't mind Um, I'm 20. Okay, let me ask you. Do you believe that women are half a brain? I'm sorry? Do you believe that women are half a brain? That women are half to what? Half a brain. Can you, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? They, I heard you. They are half a brain. Their brain is not, they have deficiency in their brain. Do you believe in that? Like, what do you mean? Um, the question is very simple. Do you think women who they are female in gender they have deficiency in their brain? Mm. Do you believe in that? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like men and women think differently, and this, this, stuff. Is, this is another question. I'm talking about deficiency. Do you know what deficiency means? I think you speak English better than me. Deficiency. It's mean they have something wrong in their cre creation. Their brain is not functioning correctly, correct? This is what deficiency means. So when I say deficiency in the brain, that's mean they have deficiency in the brain. Do you agree with that? Mm, why are you asking this? I'm just, I want to see your opinion about what some people think. But some people think women are not smart. So do you think women are not smart? Women are stupid and men are smart? No, I... You don't agree, right? I agree with you. I don't believe I'll in that. Take your own way. Okay, so women they can be smart, right? Women they are smart, not stupid, right? Yes, we, one of the greatest scholars in Islam, you know, it was Aisha. The Aisha, Arabian. she was a scholar, guys. Did you take this? Aisha, she was a scholar since when? <laughs> <laughs> listen listen okay i want you to read this your prophet saying that most of women they will go to hell because they have deficiency in their brain what do you say to your prophet what are you talking about man um, here we go it's in the front of you well, where did you get this idea uh, it's not me who get the idea this is in your book it's in the front of you 
Read the story. It's in the, in the screen. Read it for us. Go ahead. Uh, hold on. Yes. Okay, what are you trying to show me? I'm showing you that Muhammad, he claimed that women, they will go to hell, most of them, because they have deficiency in their brain. I will give you the link. I will give you the link so you can read the hadith. I just see you. I, I just see the, I just see the, um, I guess the, some hadith that you're trying to show me that uh, when she got married, I don't see anything oh, refresh your Refresh your YouTube. I just send you the link. You can open the link in Skype. I send it to you. Muhammad, he says, he saw a bunch of women. He says to them, give it charity because majority of you will be in the hellfire. A woman among them, she said, and why is that, Master of Allah? He said, because you are cursing so much, meaning you are ungrateful toward your husbands. He said, and I have not seen among you any, uh, uh, any of those lacking in intellect and religion who are more difficult upon people uh, possessing reason and inside than you so Muhammad you think that women they are the most stupid people ever and they cannot process any information and they cannot incite anything they are really 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 stupid that's what he's saying and he said this is a deficiency in your brain and this is your and so this is the deficiency of women according to your prophet your brain is not functioning and he said you have deficiency in religion too because you have your menses so what do you say <laughs> what do you think my friend I'm happy by the way that you call me and I apologize if I'm a little bit screaming or etc but I get excited when somebody uh, you know I'm, I, I help when I see people I'm helping I really get excited so what do you think do you agree with Muhammad saying that you have deficiency and you are stupid you are silly you will go to hell and why because you have deficiency in the brain and you have your menstruation every month do you agree with that Are you okay? Are you ready to leave Islam or not yet? What kind of religion you belong to? You belong in a religion, believe and teach that you are stupid. And you are calling me to prove to me that you are smart because you have answers. Correct, guys? Muhammad, he says, Muslim women are stupid. Muslim women, they call me to prove to me that I'm wrong, which means they are smarter than me. I Okay, I think you're trying to show me. there. Okay, there's a hadith that he talks of uh, Rasulullah wasallam. He talks about women who are ungrateful to their husbands. My, my friend, he said majority of women, they are going to go to hell. And let us say a woman, she is ungrateful to her husband. How that is deficiency in her brain? Maybe he is not a good person. Maybe she don't like him. So how that how that is prove that her testimony is equal one man is equal to two, and how their administration have to do with going to hell. Oh my God! When he when the, when it says that one or one are one man is equal to two women, they they met because like um. Like sometimes of uh, the two, they need two women as a witness because um, sometimes the woman forgets. Hmm. So you are you agree with your with, with Muhammad that women are stupid 
and men but are smarter. But that doesn't mean they're stupid. Well, yeah, because it says if one of them... No. No, because it's saying that the man is accurate and the woman is wrong. So one man is more accurate than two women. This is what it says. One man is more right than two women. So two of you, you need now to, to, to ask another sister to call me because two of you are equal to me. You alone is half. It doesn't mean that one man is is greater than two women it's not saying it seems that. that okay is it, it doesn't say in the quran that the man he can beat you because he is maintainer of you and because you are stupid that's mean he can correct you yes or no 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 it does not okay. it does not okay. when you okay. read the hadith no you have to read the hadith too you can't just read quran and and make these claims you have to read my friend here we go i'm reading the hadith and reading the quran the quran in front of me it says that the man he can beat you here we go chapter 4 verse number 34 and the man is in charge of the women why is in charge because you women according to islam are stupid and our maintainers are women that people take care of them okay how do they take care of them by beating them read the read the read the hadith read the quran they they are the one who will correct you which means they are the one who can make a judgment if you are right or wrong he is your god he is the one who score you he is the one who admonish you. He is the one who beat you. When the man he have all those things in his hand, that's mean he is the one is right and the women always wrong. Can a woman beat her husband in Islam if he's wrong? Uh, give me one second. Hold on. No problem. <clears throat> Your Google is so slow. Look, hmm. the, the prophet, um, you know, he talks about being like honoring your wife and being okay so if your husband he beat you he's honoring you Prophet, if, peace and blessings. if you are my wife with my respect to you i honor you by beating you kind treatment and honoring one's my wife friend, how you honor a woman by beating her explain to me your father he is married to your mother is he honor her every day by beating her actually my parents are not are not Muslims. Okay. I am a Muslim. Okay, that means they fool you. They made you believe in a, in, a, in a stupid cult. How how in the world you believe in such a mad mad religion like this? A religion says that you are going to be a sex product in the heaven of Allah. Allah will give the Muslim man hundreds of women for sex, and you will be a sex toy in the heaven. How do you accept that? How do you accept the book saying that the man he can beat you? How in the world a woman believe in such a mad cult like this? A man who is a child molester. You are against child molestation. By the way, I can show you one million imam molesting children in the mosque. It's all over. But your prophet is the first child molester. How you believe in a book says the man he can beat you. Why you are in America if you live in the USA. If you beat a dog, you go to jail. Which means Muslim women, she don't have right of a dog in America. If I beat a dog in America, I go to jail. In Islamic countries, according to Islam, if the husband beat the wife, he is doing his right. A dog in America is more protected than a Muslim woman. This is the truth. So how a smart person like you accept such a cult like that? Friends, they fool you, they lie to you. Islam, Quran, full of miracles. It's a garbage book. Here we go. Let me bring me the biggest shake ever and everybody will die laughing at the miracles of the Quran. I'm here to challenge everybody. 
who is the sheikh right now who is listening would like to call us so this lady she can see how stupid the Quran <laughs> this is the book of stupidity literally are you there my friend did you decide to leave this cult you are smarter than this how a lady like you go to school she have a brain she is a smart she accepts such a madness like this a religion says that man is maintainer and how they are maintainers because Allah he excel and they spend their property on you as if you are with my respect to you as if you are a whore or a hooker this is a shame because I spend my money in my wife I have the right to beat her You are not for hire, you are a wife. But because in Islam you are for hire, he can have four of you. Are you are you preparing yourself that your husband Ahmad is going to have four wives like you? And then by one word send you text message, he would divorce you and he will get a new brand new four. How a woman in the year 2019 accept such a cult? It's your friend, my friend, I know. You have a friends in school who fool you. They made you believe that this is an amazing religion. We are the Arab. We are the one who made Islam, and we are the one who is going to expose it and destroy it. Okay. Are you leaving Islam? No, I'm never leaving it. You will leave Islam. You will wait. Just wait. You are leaving Islam. Inside your heart, you are saying, this is garbage. This is, this is why you are so silent. You have nothing to say. Yes, because I love Jesus. <laughs> no, you see, you have no answer. Do you have an answer? You don't. She hang up. You are out of Islam already. This is why you are so quiet. You have nothing to say. What do you want to say? I mean, this is garbage. Look at this. We have to use violence to make you obedient. This is what the Quran is saying. This is rejected even with animals these days. Which means Islam treat you less than animals. If an owner of a dog in America, he force his dog by violence to obey him, he go to jail. A woman in Islam, her husband, he have the right to force her by violence, by beating her, so she will obey him. How? <laughs> hey, Muhammad, how are you? <laughs> Go ahead, Muhammad. Are you there? Hello? Hello? Yes, Muhammad. What do you want to say to us? Don't move your microphone. It's making bad noise and we are losing it. Hmm? Don't move your microphone. It's making a bad noise. Is it better now? Don't move it. Okay, go ahead. What do you want to say? Yeah, you deceived the other guy. Uh, yeah. You said the Qibla was uh, invented by Umar, hmm. but he doesn't say Qibla. It says uh, Maqam Ibrahim. Okay, so what is, Ibrahim okay, what is it? Okay, hold on, hold on. The, so so you, do you agree that Maqam Ibrahim is the direction of the prayer? No, it's not the direction of the prayer. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the it's the place where Ibrahim Islam stood and then he built the Kaaba. Okay. And so, so this is the Kaaba. So Maqamu Ibrahim is the Kaaba, isn't it? Ibrahim Maqam supposedly Ibrahim is, is the one who raised the the, the walls of the Kaaba. Maqam Ibrahim is not the Kaaba. That's very. What uh, is what is Maqamu Ibrahim? What is Maqamu, what is Maqamu Ibrahim? Maqam Ibrahim is somewhere. It's the station where he stood on. That's, that's what it is. The station. Okay. The yeah. station he stood on. What is that a station? Um, it, was a, it was, I think it was a rock or something. And then he stood on it and then he okay. built the Kaaba. Does the, does the Quran say it's taken from the station of Abraham as a place to worship? Yes or no? Uh, say it again, sorry? Does the Quran say it's take the station of Abraham as a place to worship? Yes or no? 
uh, it says what takhidu um, in maqam ibrahim musalla take as a place of uh, prayer okay what is that that's near the kaaba it's not the kaaba it's okay the... so are you saying before that nobody was was praying near the kaaba right the prayer near the kaaba you you, you what, what's happening hold is on, that hold, you on, hold on hold on hold on no. if 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 abraham if abraham was standing near the Kaaba. Was a praying in which direction? When he was building, he was a praying, was he? This is another question. Abraham was standing near the Kaaba. You said, and he was a praying. He was a praying in which direction? He was a praying at the time of building. This is another question. He was a praying in which direction? When? Which direction? He was a praying near the Kaaba. Where? Who is facing what? You're just facing the Kaaba. Thank you very much. <laughs> wait, 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 you haven't made any. So you are saying Kaaba. you are saying he did not ask them to face the Kaaba, but it, it just do what Abraham do and face the Kaaba. No, I'm saying you quoted the hadith. In the hadith, you said that Umar Dian who yes. said face the Kaaba, which was incorrect. Umar Dian never said, uh, uh, I want to face the Kaaba. He had a desire that people pray uh, at the place where Ibrahim and Islam stood. That's okay. what he wanted. And he what is that? That's what does that mean? Are you saying to me, but that's mean nobody used to pray there in the time of uh, where Abraham he stood, right? Yeah, no one uh, had a specific place like that uh, to pray. Mm. There's no possibility. Read carefully the verse with me. This is the verse. Read the verse for me. One minute. Let me open uh, YouTube. <clears throat> Uh, and mention when we made the house a place of return for the people mm. and the place of security and take from the standing of uh, place of Ibrahim a place of prayer. Okay. And we charge, yeah. So is it about the Kaaba? No, this is uh, regarding the Muqam Ibrahim. No, hold on. No, it says, and we made the house. What house? Yeah, that, it's talking about, yeah, that's okay, about the Okay, and he's quoting yeah. this verse, you crazy. The, uh, uh, the, the the hadith saying this verse about the the place of Abraham it is my words so all of this is what the man his name Omar he said Maqam Ibrahim is the verse which he is quoting he is not quoting the whole verse he is quoting the, the whole the, he's quoting a sentence to tell you which exactly he is speaking about so this is what he meant and before that the Muslims was praying to which direction if you don't mind to say um, what do you mean? They, they already prayed before the this verse came. The Muslims were praying in which direction? They already uh, prayed to the Kaaba already. No, before they were praying to Jerusalem. No, 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 no. In Allah says in Surah Baqarah, Allah says, We have seen you facing the after that. That's the time when uh, the Kaaba was changed. You, your prophet was praying to Jerusalem in until what year? Until um, um, I think it was yeah, it was when after the migration. Okay, you are saying after to me this is in, happened in the chapter of Al Baqarah, right? Yes, yeah, so Al Baqarah. Yeah. Okay, isn't it, this is Al Baqarah too? Uh, yeah, this is yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So. So so it is the same. So Allah, Muhammad is confused where he to pray. And this is funny, why he is confused about where to pray. And Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem. Can you tell me why Muhammad praying to Jerusalem? Uh, that was Qibla. That was, uh, no, no, show me, what, show me the verse that says, Hey, Muhammad, pray to Jerusalem. The Prophet knew already from Revelation. How he knew? How he knew? Okay, show me, show me where he got he knew. Like, I knew. Okay, when I say I knew, I'm a man, I'm a human, I'm not God. Where Allah says to Muhammad, Pray direction of Jerusalem. We know from the hadith where the Prophet said that he used to face uh, Jerusalem. I know that. This is another question. Where yeah, he knew? No, no. This is tradition from who? From the Jews? Uh, of course, Allah revealed the revelation to the Go ahead, Jews as well. Okay, show me where where Allah revealed to Muhammad to pray to the to uh, to Jerusalem. Yeah, just by the mere fact that he was praying, that shows that was revelation. Okay. He already hold on, oh, guys. Muhammad he prayed to Jerusalem, but he did not need a revelation from God. So why he's God? 
He has in his knowledge. That's it. What do you mean he had in his knowledge? Muhammad is born with knowledge about revelation. No, Allah reveals to him knowledge. Okay, as long as he revealed to him knowledge, where, how he revealed it? He gave him Quran. The Quran is not the only knowledge Allah okay. reveals to him. When Allah revealed to him, he revealed to him what words or he what revealed to him? The, not just the knowledge, sometimes he reveals so the knowledge. knowledge is like he smells something coming from Jerusalem, he starts sniffing and he starts, he decides to go to work. When you say knowledge, what does that mean? You don't know what knowledge means. Okay, I know I do not know because you are saying to me knowledge is not Quran. Knowledge is not Allah speaking to him. Knowledge is not Jibreel telling him because it have to be one of those. Show me where knowledge it says, show me where the knowledge, how he received the knowledge and where you get this conclusion from. What confusing? Is anything I confused? My friend, as long you are saying to me, he have a knowledge. Where Muhammad he got the knowledge? You said from Allah. How Allah said the knowledge to him? However, he sent it. That's it. How? He did well, it's not my concern. Well, isn't it the Quran says, "Wama huwa illa wahyun yuha," which means everything is inspiration. So it had to be Quran. No, everything is not Quran. Obviously, it's not, uh, we also for sure hadith. not everything is Quran. As an example, Umar bin Khattab he made Quran. So there's many Quran. This is another question. Muhammad received knowledge from who? Did Allah speak to him? Um. Yeah, so Allah, Allah told him, Allah knew, uh, Allah told him that he gave him the knowledge to somehow. Either it could be through a dream, it could be through. Okay, show me uh, the story. Or... Don't tell me could be. Don't, don't tell me. Do you be, do you believe in the religion of could be, or you believe in the religion of for sure? Yeah, I'm saying this information. Okay. Don't tell me. Don't, so don't tell me then it could be. Matter. No, no, don't, not, don't no, tell me. I'm saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't no, no, matter. No, 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 it, no. It does matter. I'm asking you a question. Why? In, Why this, doesn't is, matter? this is about God. If somebody, what if somebody fabricating a story does not exist? So when you say it doesn't matter, that's mean it doesn't matter if Muhammad is a prophet or not. It doesn't matter if he's saying the truth or not. It doesn't matter. So when you say Muhammad was praying to Jerusalem, should you ask yourself why he prayed to Jerusalem and where Allah he said that to him? I already told you the hadith says that that used to be the Qibla. So the Prophet already told us. He friend, told us that why it used to be the Qibla? This is the question. You are not giving the answer. Why it used to be? Yeah, why it used to be the Qibla? What is the exactly? What is the reason? It was, um, it was a mosque that was built by um, uh, one of the prophets. Hmm. Okay, let me show you something. Do you see my screen? Uh, yeah, one minute. Okay. <clears throat> oh, you who believe the idolaters only are unclean, so let them not come near the hmm. inviolable uh, place of worship after this is it there. Yeah. If you fear poverty, Allah shall preserve you. So, yeah, what about that? Okay. What happened after that? The, what do you mean? No, no, no non-Muslim cannot enter the Mac Mecca, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Which year Muhammad he controlled Mecca? Which year uh, he controlled it? Yeah. Um, I think it's nine years after he or ten years. Or what? Did you give me a year. What, what year? What year? Nine years after Hijri. Okay, and uh, for how long after that Muhammad he left? He he, he did leave. According, according, according to you. I can't hear you properly. I'm saying Muhammad, he did attack Mecca and he supposedly been victorious. Right? You know, he went, he went to conquer it, okay. and they all, like, most okay. of them, they so were... until, until they, they, then, they did all right. Did this verse came right away after he took Mecca, or it took some time? Uh, I don't know. It might came after, I don't know. Before that time, Muhammad was praying in which direction? He was already praying um, towards, towards the uh, Kaaba. Show me the reference. So the Masjid Qibla Tain. My friend. That is in my, fr my friend, my friend. Don't tell me the Qibla Tain. What Qibla Tain? Show me the reference. Where? When Muhammad he start praying to Mecca. <coughs> um, I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have it to hand at the moment. Okay, I will give you time. Maybe you can call me tomorrow or next next year. Now, so, listen, so listen, what, 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 what evidence do you want exactly? Okay, no, no. So, listen, when when Muhammad he changed before, his mind about August. when Muhammad exactly he changed his mind, and you will find this is when Omar he said to him that what it is happened, and you can go right now and read the interpretation. However, if you look with me here, this is chapter nine, verse twenty-eight. It says, "If you fear poverty, poverty, what is that? Why the Muslim they will fear poverty?" Um. Yeah, because obviously the uh, it is going to be less people to trade with them because you're going to be expelling people Correct. from uh, land. Okay, what yeah. is the solution for that? Uh, you know, Allah will give his bounty. Isn't it? He will give them what? His bounty. Don't you? What don't you mean? Allah will give them wealth. He'll take care. How of he give them wealth? Is that the money they will steal from the Christians? No, what will happen is other people will try to attack them and then Allah will make them yeah, victorious. Go. You see, you see how you get yourself busted. It says right away after that, fight against those who don't believe in Allah from the Christian and the Jews. So they did not attack them. So if you fear of poverty, Allah will give you. How he will give you? Okay, attack them and take the jizya. And this is exactly what happened that Omar, he said, as a solution that we are going to force everybody to pray to Kaaba, not to Jerusalem. And everybody have to do Hajj to Kaaba to make money, and the Kaaba became a business. So Allah He gave them money from two sources, forcing people to do Hajj, as it used to be for people come to do Hajj from all everywhere to the Kaaba by the kuffar like Muhammad. And after Islam is the same, the Kaaba before Islam is the same as the Kaaba after Islam. We bring people to do Hajj go around the Kaaba, is the black stone, and give donation. So the source, the yeah, they, they broke the treaty many times. That's why they were. My friend, nobody. They have against. no treaty. Muhammad, he never had a treaty with any Christians. What treaty? He's yeah, a treaty with the Jews. Listen, yeah, listen, the listen, the listen. There's no, no, no. The Jews. This is a, 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 another, another lie. However, look at it. Says, attack those who believe in the following. Not because they are breaking the treaty. No, it says it says why to attack them. And by the way, but do you know that? Do you know that the Tawbah is the last chapter Muhammad he received in his lifetime? At the end, a Tawbah is the last one. Yeah, this is the last one. Oh, okay. Okay, it says fight against those who don't believe, not those who fight you. Read it. Read it. Yeah, yeah, like I say, it's a description of because they don't believe in Allah on the last day. That's why exactly. they are attacking the people. But they are not attacking anyone. Stop lying. It doesn't say they are okay. attacking. No, it okay. says no. You mentioned they are you refusing. Mentioned no, you because they are. It any says here. It says here because they are worshiping a guy. His name is Ezra, as a son of Allah. And the Christian, they say the Messiah is a son of Allah. However, neither the Jews, neither the Christian believe in Allah, and the Jews they don't. Then nowhere we can find the story of this guy uh, 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 Azir, not Israel. This is false translation. Uzair, he is a son of Allah. The Jews don't believe there's, a, there's such a guy. It's not exist. And then he says why? And because of that, and they take beside their Lord their rabbis. So this is the reason yeah. to kill them. Now listen, listen, no, yeah. listen, listen. Yeah. I don't want to waste my time. You said to me that when uh, when uh, Omar, he says, take from the location of Abraham Musalla. He don't mean the Kaaba, correct? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Okay, do you Muslims pray only where Abraham he stand? We pray from every area, so every section. But, but the Quran, according to you, says you pray there. The Quran, the Quran is uh, when when the desire of Muradi Anu had this, and then the revelation came down. My then friend, don't, don't play games. Don't play games. You said to me that this verse here is speaking about take the location of Abraham where he used to stand. This is what you said, correct? That's mean this yeah, is yeah. the Muslim they should stand nowhere else. You cannot stand around the Kaaba. You have to be in that place only. This is what you just saying. No, it doesn't say only. It says just it take says as a that. Point. No, it says that because according to you. It doesn't say only. I agree. I agree. No, I agree with you. It doesn't say only because it's not about what you are saying. But now you are the one saying it is only about the place of Abraham. When I ask you, when Omar he said that Allah he sent, as I say, take the station of Abraham. What is the station of Abraham? It is the Kaaba. 
It's not the Kaaba. You said no. You said the yes, station no. of Abraham is not the Kaaba. Of course it's not. Okay, that's mean you have it's to pray. Location. Hold on, hold on. That's mean you have to pray. If this is not meant the Kaaba, that's mean you have to pray only standing in the place of Abraham. And before that date, nobody stand there. Yes? No, you're not making sense. This is supposed <laughs> to be for like you're not making okay. sense because if, if, people, if people they are praying, okay, pray, let, yeah. let me make it more more simple. Were, were, was people praying before that date in the station of Abraham? In my house, in my house. Don't okay. me have, a, yes, yes or no? Virtue. No, the difference is there were no special virtue. They weren't commanded by Allah, you know, it's good to pray here or take a place of prayer. They just prayed it because it's just that. Okay, so it's now a, yeah. when yeah. Allah, he says, take from the station of Abraham. How, meet, how many meters far away from the Kaaba, the station of Abraham? Um... About 10 meters maybe or something. 10 meters. Guys, Allah, he says, pray 10 meters away from the Kaaba. This is what you're saying to us, right? Yeah, but it's not specifically talking <laughs> about the Kaaba, is it? Then you was incorrect. You Just go, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> because you, 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 you silly. Maqamu Ibrahim is just a stone. How the Muslim, they will pray in that stone, you idiot. It's a stone. It is nothing but a stone. So how the Muslims will pray under stone? Take the station of Abraham, take the place where Abraham he used to pray for. Do exactly as Abraham because Muhammad he forsake the tradition of Abraham all this previous time he was not praying to the Kaaba he was praying to Jerusalem and according to Muslims this is the tradition of the Abraham he pray in the direction of the Kaaba and he have a stone he stand on it this is the maqam it's not even a place it's not even a building And later the Muslim they start building things around and you know, the, the same as the Kaaba they change even the location of the Kaaba today is changed <coughs> they have no idea what they are talking about secondly let us say Abraham he says he is not talking about the Kaaba how in the world Allah he take a uh, 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 Omar words and he made the Quran they are saying this is not about the Kaaba, this is about ice cream. Ice cream. Omar said, take ice cream as your best food. Allah, he take the, the statement of Omar, he make a Quran. <laughs> and the funny, they say to you that Allah in the Quran, he changed all mankind and genie to make Quran like him, yet he is copying the word of Omar making it Quran. Because it doesn't make a difference, by the way, if it is the, about the Kaaba or something else. Let us say it's about uh, making shish kebab. Okay. Omar, he says, take shish kebab and make salad and add yogurt and bring falafel. And, and then Allah, he take the words. And look, it says, so the verses reveal the same as I said. That's mean Allah is copying Omar. This is the whole point. And not only that, not only this one, it's about the hijab. And take, O oh people, station of Abraham as a place of a prayer. Place of a prayer. Where is that station? It's the Kaaba. And here it says, for some of your prayers, two rak'at and tawaf of the Kaaba. Do you see it? This is even in the hadith in the front of you. So before that time, they are not doing that. They are not going around the Kaaba. So what he is saying, do what Abraham he is to do. Who is the one who made the order? Omar, Allah, he take it, he put it in his pocket. <coughs> Number three. 
and the most important verse which is the hijab impacting the wife the life of every Muslim female is because of the bomb of of Sauda so that he goes she goes to do poopoo -poo. Omar because he's a savage man low-class man he make fun of the woman who is doing poopoo -poo. so what he said to her Arafnaki ya Sauda what a filthy man imagine your wife she go to do poopoo -poo at the dark and your friend he go after her he says hey we notice you are Sauda huh we recognize you Sauda this is the reason for the hijab to come because the woman she was doing poopoo -poo? and look how evil he is he flirt with the wives of Muhammad and then he go inside the house he said to the Muhammad tell your wives man to cover themselves I mean come on He's just trying to cover himself like, okay, they would tell him that he was flirting with us. He's telling him, I am looking at your women. Allah Messenger, ask, ask the ladies to observe veil. But Allah Messenger, he did not answer, he did not care. And then he keeps saying that. And then one day, Sauda was going in the dark to call for the call of nature to do poopoo. And Omar, he said to her, we recognize you, Sauda. Aisha said, Allah the exalted, the glorious, then he revealed the verse. But this is the verse which Omar, he said. What a crazy cult. And actually, uh, uh, Muhammad, he said, if there is a prophet to come after me, uh, that will be Omar. Because Omar, he got him busted that he is a liar. Do you know that? If there is a messenger, is if there is a prophet, will come after me, that would be Omar. Why Muhammad, he says that? Because he well, Omar, he got him busted. He's taking his words. So Muhammad now is telling Omar, you know what? We are in the same fraud. Okay, I'm going to tell people. He's preparing himself to believe that you you can say you can claim later that you are a prophet. If there is a messenger to come after me, that will be Omar. Let me see if I can find the hadith in English. And how Muhammad, who is Muhammad to say such a statement? You see the Muslim, they say Muhammad, uh, Muhammad he have a knowledge. <laughs> The Messenger of Allah said, if there was to have a prophet after me, it would been, have been Umar ibn al-Khattab. Why? Because Umar, he got him busted. He's stealing his words. As simple as that. And what is the qualification of Umar to be a prophet? Because he's a prophet already. He says things, it can become Quran. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh boy <coughs> all right guys i'm losing my voice we are here for a long time this is a long video uh, those who download you can cut them pieces we have many calls today and i hope those who uh, you know we have at least one muslim left islam that's wonderful and i hope the lady she is smarter than she's thinking i hope she will leave this cult soon they fool you you know they, they, you go to school, you send your child to school. This is why it's very important to educate your children. They deceive them. Miracles in the Quran, say us in the Quran. Read my books and die laughing. Die laughing at the comedy of the Quran. You have to be an officially a person who is in drugs. Like you blind, you blindfold your eyes and you put your head, your brain into sleep. To believe in such a garbage as simple as that
how in the world anyone can believe in such a madness this is why my friend educate your children they go to school they meet with others and there's many there they will fool them schools can be very a good place for education but it can be a place where your children learn drugs have sex around you know uh, get aids uh, learn how to smoke so they can learn good stuff they can learn bad stuff you have to protect your children don't think just because it's a school is going to be a safe heaven for them this is not true a policeman in france he's a growing man not a kid he converted to islam last year a year after he jumped in the in, in the in the police station he killed four people all his life was a peaceful man protecting people he was a policeman he converted to islam look what happened and he is a growing man the devil can play with the mind of people and you have to protect yourself knowledge is a protection foolishness is a destruction that's why the Bible says my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance ignorance my friend is what we fight we are not fighting Muslims I, I love the Muslims I'm fighting ignorance it's our enemy it's not Muslims who they are my enemy I love them they believe in a such a man who brought nothing but madness violence bloodshed stupid teaching superstition false false science crazy science and yet they don't want to listen but I have good news for you millions of people watching my videos I just gave my book to the Indonesian people the biggest Islamic country for free in their language let us see how many people they will die laughing up after reading what the truth it says in Arabic and how many they will leave Islam in Indonesia we have thousands and thousands go and see in Morocco go and see in Iraq go and see in Kurdistan go and see in China the Muslims leave in Islam go everywhere but you will see in the news somebody converted to Islam because Islam when you convert nobody will kill you but those who leave Islam are bigger but nobody dare to say like the gentleman he just spoke to me he already he said he left Islam but he don't dare to say there's a consequence they will kill me they will torture me you know but the truth is a lot are leaving Islam and this is how we cry when we read the Quran we cry laughing thank you guys for being here I hope uh, you have a good time and don't forget please to download the video this video will stay there maybe maximum two hours three hours and I will take it down so please download as soon as you can and enter I see you soon again if I can come tomorrow I will if not God is willing when the Lord he allowed us to do it Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again take care